don't know if I told you a story about like when my nan went once again, like in Africa, she says we're going to buy fish. Lo and behold, do I know that we're going to a riverside where they, <laughs> where, where they're okay. freaking catching like it. catching the live fish and asking her which live fish she wants. Sure, sure. And then after she asked me to hold the bag with the live fish in it. And then moving. Fam! Like, I, jo- I was just like, you see these things here. And then when we get home and I was just like, and she was like, oh, why are you scared in the back? Why are you jumping? I was just like, the fish is still flapping on. And she was like, why are you scared of a fish for? <laughs> Like, you're like honestly, honestly, when you the been fish are strong, you know. Fam, we were in the car for an hour, and I looked down, and the fish is like looking up at me. What kind of fish it. was it? Oh, uh, it was like I know it wasn't a catfish because I don't like catfish. Okay. Um, I can't. I don't know. I'm not very good with names of fish. Okay, okay. But okay. like, it was like a water fish. I of course. It was, <laughs> Oh. oh my gosh! Like, it was uh, not that fish is good. Uh, just call why I said a water. Of course, it's a water damn fish. Welcome back for another episode of juice and the sauce as always you're joined by your two hosts myself lasimba pink and nastasha lasengo hey what is happening how you been i've been good i'm actually exhausted don't ask me why i'm exhausted i don't know like i haven't done you know what i feel like i've been like super social this week and like the socializing has just tired me out i'm not gonna lie on my way here i fell asleep on the bus it was just like lord help me today you must have been real, real tired. I was, point. I was. I didn't take my iron tablet, so, you know, I think that's had an effect. I'm just like, why am I this tired? Like, oh, I haven't taken Did my iron. Did the conductor come and, like, prod you or something? No, I woke up on time. You know what? I don't, you know, like, if I fall asleep on public transport, yeah, which happens often okay. because, like, I don't even fall asleep. I close my eyes and I'm rest. I call it resting my eyes. Sure. I don't. I don't sleep to the extent where I'm like, rawr, like, and like I'm leading on someone. Yeah, I literally yeah, yeah. light sleep, so I'm always aware. Like I hear the mm-hmm. the the bus stop, you know, the you know the bus stop person tell me, oh, we're at this bus stop. So yeah. Okay. okay. How's your week been, Miss Simba? Uh, it has been good. It's been uh, interesting. So I this week started work in a restaurant. Yeah. So I left my. Sorry, I just dropped my phone. I yeah. left um, my night job that I was doing in Asda, for those that don't know. Yeah. Uh, I was doing three nights there. Uh, I won't say the restaurant name, but uh, it's been real. <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted, I wanted to, I, I to actually, call it out. I wanted to call it out, but then I thought when you're not mentioning the name, then I was like, I can't call it out then. I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll mention the, the the name of the restaurant in future episodes. But for yeah. now, I just say the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, I guess for those that don't know, like I had a restaurant many many years ago. I thought it'd be real super cool just to get like some new experience, uh, just up to date experience on that. And uh, restaurant life is not e- restaurant life is not a joke. When I tell you, it is work. Like there's no clock watching. Like <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> Like, it is work. It's intense, work. man. It's intense. I, I'm not going to lie. When I had the cafe, people thought it was fun and games. And I, I, I wouldn't say I lost a lot of friends, but I, I think a lot of people around me thought I was just didn't want to respond to messages. I didn't want to come out anymore. I didn't want to. Listen, please vouch for me. <laughs> nah, it's like, so it's funny. I was speaking to my, my brother about it. And uh, he works for, uh, I think I've said this before, so I can call it. He works for Leon. Yeah. Right? And it, oh, yeah, you did say. Yeah, yeah. We, we are, I, I, everybody Which knows. branch is he at? I don't actually know. Can I so come from... from... <laughs> oh, you <laughs> Leon, don't you? I do like Leon. I like their fish finger wrap, which I now do at home. And I've upgraded that. So I don't really get that anymore because I'm like, my one bangs better. Okay. Um, I do like their, their hot box. Because okay. I think they're very filling and they're just very convenient. And I think they're reasonably priced as well. I know you, you're you not a fan. I have you're over rec- it. Yeah, I've got a record saying I don't like Leon. Uh, the only thing I do like from there, they do like a Christmas wrap, which is mm. really, really nice. Apart from that, 
it like yeah, no, yeah. I'm, I'm not feeling that but he was even saying like and I've had this before in my old job like when you're super tired and you've been talking to people all day when you come home you don't want to talk to no one you go straight to your room <laughs> go straight to your bed like you just you just literally just want your like my mom says your ears to eat grass where you just want peace and quiet you want to be lazy uh yeah, it's I mean, hard. everything you're saying, I'm just like, preach, preach, preach. And when I had the cafe, like, I became, I don't think, I, I, I wouldn't say I became antisocial, but I was like, I, I was more of a bit more of a grouch. Mm-hmm. And I think, um, not because I intended to be, but yo, when you've been talking to customers all day and then you get home and then someone's asking you <laughs> oh oh do you know oh, oh there, there's no washing powder you're just like well, i'm like motherfucker you need to help yourself <laughs> like you're, you're i i'm coming in at one o'clock in the morning and you've waited till all day what all day you've been waiting to tell me that there's no washing powder so I'm, sometimes you just need to help yourself and those kind of stresses and people I, I think definitely when you're in the food industry and when you're a restauranter, mm. I understand. Do you now understand why Gordon Ramsay is like flames in the kitchen? Like he's, uh, it's just, I'm not saying that go to that extent, yeah. but I understand like, honestly, when I'm, <laughs> let me tell you, I've also worked in restaurants and the way the head chef is shouting sometimes I would, I look at him and I go, I understand the stresses because mm. you have um, you have a bar, you have a presentation bar, you have a speed bar. And if your chefs are not doing what they're meant to do and you've got orders flying in and then you've got, you know, you've got people, your, your front of house are doing some next nonsense. <laughs> you need everybody on your team to be on point in it. And... I completely, I I agree. Like when you work in the restaurant and it's not just restaurants, I think customer facing jobs like are very difficult because you talk to people all day and then you go home and then someone wants a big old long conversation to you and you're just like, babes, like (laughs) save it, (laughs) save it for tomorrow or the day that I'm off. And even on my day off, yeah, you can don't give me, give me big stories after 12 o'clock. And the funny thing is, th- those people at home who aren't <laughs> speaking to customers, they don't understand. They just like <laughs> they just see you as like your anti soldier. Like, why are you going to your room? Come spend time with the family. Come sit down. Like, and, but they ask questions. They're not talking. They're asking and you, questions. And this is why my golden rule in my family is: I don't like questions. And they're always like, oh, you're antisocial. You're always, you always got like a hunch in your shoulder. It's just like, I don't, you're not having a conversation with me. You're reeling off questions off a list and you're asking me questions that you know the answer to. Mm -hmm. And that kind of pisses me off as well. It's just like, oh, like I'm trying to think of a good, somebody did this to me the other day and I just had to, you know, I just, I'd look at people and just like, don't ask me that question. You know, the freaking answer to the question. Okay. Okay. What did, yeah, you don't remember at all. Ah, uh, what was it? Oh, okay. So I was working with someone and they make me coffee every single day, right? Okay. Every day they make me a coffee. But every day they seem to ask me what milk I want. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like what milk I want. And it comes to a point where I'm a bit like, fam, it's the same as yesterday. Nothing's changed. Like ever since I've been here, been with you, I've been drinking the same coffee. And it's like, you ask me every single day, not just that once, it's every single day in every point of day that you're asking me, do I want, do I want oat milk? And I'm just like, sometimes I'm like, bitch, what's changed since the last hour? Just do the, and it's those questions. And it's, I understand they're asking because I may want almond milk. I may want real milk. But the fact is you're asking me that has a conversation starter. And that's what annoys me. Mm-hmm. You're asking me that as, oh yeah, it's, it's not even a question. It's kind of like you're making a question kind of statement. It's just like, it's not funny. Just do the damn coffee. <laughs> and, it, and I don't know if people realize that slightly becomes annoying. So I take a long breath. I'm not going to call out the person who yeah. does this, but yeah, somebody that uh, has known me an awful long time 
likes to offer me food that I, I don't like to eat. <laughs> and um, what's I'm jar- laughing because I feel like I know who it is. <laughs> but what's jarring about it is like, okay, after the 50th time I said I don't like said particular food, surely... You you, don't, yeah, you know, yeah, and I'll, you know, I said to said person, you know what, don't even buy it. Like, call, text me before you know you may <laughs> buy something, and then the next day you'll be like, hey, I bought you. Da, da, da. I was like, but I don't want, like, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. So digressing from what we were saying, but you know, sure. it's all it, it 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 all it all um ties in. So yeah, I can get that, like. When I've done long shifts and even if I've, I, when I'm baking and I suppose not so much now because um, I've changed location and it's just me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm more open to conversations with people. And I, I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not adverse or grouchy anymore. But when, <laughs> <laughs> no, people used to think like when I had the cafe, like I was on, I, I even knew that, yo, sometimes I'd, I'd answer someone like in my family or somebody like a friend really, really sharp. And I'd have to take a step back and I'd have to take a step back and apologize. And I'm like, oh, sorry, that came out a bit mean. And it's just like, oh, I've just been speaking to so many people today. And it's just like, you know, you get your one customer, like, or that's your favorite, or she's the customer that comes in all the time. And they always want a long conversation they want to tell you about what their cat had dog had you know like everything that's going on Mm -hmm. and it's just sometimes it's just like I don't want to have a conversation but at the same time in my line of work well the way I like to work I don't really like to have big conversations when I'm baking or decorating and it's just when I'm working I actually just don't (laughs) I don't do conversations but afterwards yeah I'm a bit of a chat box you know just touching on what you were speaking about, like just being sharp and then yeah. going back to what you were saying about like Ramsey and how he speaks yeah. to people in the kitchen. Um, sometimes like, you know, witnessing what goes on in the kitchen, sometimes, you know, people can be a bit rude. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess that's a nice way of putting it, but I think sometimes it's necessary, you know, because sometimes like, it's like certain things or decisions that you make in the kitchen it has to be binary it's like either yes or no either you do that or you don't do that and especially like well-established kitchens like there's a there's a procedure yeah and there's a reason for that procedure you know you start you know making your own interpretation and things like that um you know then the the customer's going to get a different experience when they come in you know uh a book that i was i was about to say reading listening Mm. to uh by danny meyer yeah uh so danny meyer is the guy behind uh what's that that burger place shake shack okay uh so he's behind shake shack uh i understand he's also involved in like gold belly you know gold belly so gold belly which one sorry i would (laughs) you said that so far so i'm like what (laughs) gold belly he's i think he's uh i think he backed it so basically they do like subscriptions for like food in the states oh, okay. so like brownies cakes yeah, yeah, chocolates yeah. and da, 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 da. uh but yeah i think in his book when i was listening to it um if i remember correctly i mean i'm paraphrasing here basically what you were saying is that like your job i guess with the restaurant mm. is to move the salt shaker back to the middle of the table yeah like your your manager is going to put it on the left yeah and the waiter is going to put it on the right and then someone's going to move it your job as the owner or the, or yeah. the manager whatever is always put the salt shaker back yeah. Right, so that whether it's Ramsey or head chef or whatever, him shouting at you it, is this is how it's done. Yeah, and I'm I'm gonna say this like if you've my family will tell you I was like a horror when it came to food service. Oh my gosh, and you know what it is is like I have a certain level of presentation mm-hmm. that I uphold, mm-hmm. and what I don't like is you just plot it, like, blobbing it down on a plate because you're in a rush. No take your time and look at what you're doing. And sometimes if you say it to someone, uh, take your time and look at what you're doing, they're Mm. like, okay, but they still repeat the same thing that you've told them not to do, you know? But when you, there is a certain firmness if Mm. in the kitchen that you have to kind of take, because working in the kitchen is not easy. It's not Mm. easy. And people ask me all the time, like, do I want to go into full cooking? I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to chef it up let me tell you that's one thing that i'm not i like cooking for friends i Mm. like entertaining friends and small groups of people anything past 
six or let's just say eight, including myself, that's catering. For me, mm. I'm I'm calling in I'm calling in a catering service. I'm calling in my mum to do the back. I'm I'm not standing on a cooker like that. I do family cooking and entertainment cooking. I don't do full on like, oh, I'm gonna cook you a pot of soup that that's stuff my mum loves mm. to do. Mm-hmm. But when I have been orchestra you know, when my mum has been chefing and my brother have been chefing I've had to be that Gordon Ramsay for them. Even my sisters will tell you there was one time I had to rough them up in the kitchen. I, I feel bad about that moment when I had to rough up my sister in the kitchen. But when you see what they were doing in the kitchen, yeah. it needed me to be firmer. There was one time, okay, I'll give you an example. There was one time, really busy lunchtime service. Why is my mum on the phone to my nan while stirring the soup pot? What, what, was, wrong when, what was wrong with that? It's busy and she's supposed to be um, dishing okay. up, like, she's supposed to be dishing up the soup for customers. Oh, she was chit-chatting. Not she no was attention. on the phone talking to my nan going, yeah, I'm at the cafe. It's really busy. Why the hell are you on your phone? The, f- the, customers, the customer's waiting for the food. So what did you say to your mom? I told her to put that phone down immediately. And then she was like, you can't talk to me like that. I'm your mother. And I'm like, you're my mother. But right about now, you're the, you're the employee and I'm your manager and you need to get off the phone. And I took the phone <laughs> off of her. It was a really rough kind of statement because even like somebody who worked in the building came and was just like, Nisash, you really, you really want to, you run a tight ship when it comes to your family. I think my friend JB was there at that at one point and he was like, Stash, sometimes you've got to remember that's your mum. And I was like, yeah, but that's, I'm going to remember she's my mum. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but her doing that is money. Because if the t- soup is burnt or it comes back cold and a customer's complaining, who's lost out? Me or my mum? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we have lost out. And then she's going to complain to me about uh, something that she wants. It, it, it's a circle of life and we all need to get with the program in it. But once I once I spoke to them after the shift and told them, like, you can't be on your phone whilst you're serving. And she was like, hey, 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 yes, I know, I know. I was just telling, I was just telling her something. I was like, no, you've got to respect the fact that mm. you're, you're serving, you know, you're cooking for people and they're expecting a certain level of excellence from you. They're not expecting Julia on the phone. <laughs> Because they're super late because Julia's on the phone. So I'm giving away my mum's name. But everybody, <laughs> everybody knows. I, I feel like everybody who watched the show knows what my mum's name is anyway. Kind of thing. Anyway. But um, if you get what I mean. Like they're expecting a certain level of um, excellence. And you're out here giving them Julia on the phone. Speaking to her mum. Telling telling your mum that the cafe's busy. No, look. I... I uh... <laughs> So, I, I look. I see both sides of the coin. Obviously, I sympathise because hey, that's your mom. But at the same time, I understand that. Look, like A, B, C, D needs to get ticked off. Right? Yeah, in the right order, it needs to get done. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm being that salt. You see, I'm being the manager. I'm being taking the salt shaker back into the middle. That's what I was doing. You, you have to. You know, um, it's funny. <laughs> the more, the more, more I think about this, like there's all these um, kind of Instagram chefs, yeah. right? Want to explore catering and stuff like that. Um, some of them don't know like how intense it can be. And it's like before taking on a client, it might be a good idea to like go work in a kitchen, you know, go get that I experience. I mean, let me tell you something. After me running the cafe and mm. I enjoyed, like, let me tell you, first of all, I enjoyed having that place because it gave me so much experience and knowledge. And it made me also ask myself the question, is mm. this what I really want to do? And I came, because in my head, Mm-mm-mm. prior to me having the cafe, I was very much like, yeah, I can cook and I can do cakes. I, I, I Two months in, I was just like, I ain't trying to do this chef in life because it's <laughs> I'm a baker and I want to keep it as a baker. But I found out quickly that I wasn't a, a Greg's kind of baker. And when I mm-hmm. use the terminology Greg's, it's like that constant pumping out cakes oh, like okay. like literally every single day like i'm pulling out cakes from my i'm mixing every day i'm baking you know i'm um baking every single day yeah. like all of that i like to do wholesale but only for for certain things on okay. my menu but i'm not trying to do that but also at the same time i think i was in such a deep end that i didn't not having the experience of baking every single day made me not like baking every single day Mm -hmm. but whereas now i am challenging myself to be in that environment and getting the experience of actually being in that 
restaurant, that cafe, yeah, yeah. and really just pumping out my skills and fine tuning my baking skills. I've actually had a 360 thought on it. Not mm-hmm. a 360, but we get into a, we're at a 180 at the moment okay. and I can see where my mistakes were mm-hmm. and where I kind of, I wouldn't, I want to, if we want to say failed, but we're going to say like where I lacked experience, I'm now picking that up and saying, oh, okay, Nastasha, you know, this is what you were supposed to be doing. But I know that now going into the future and wanting to, and having my eyes set on my concept store, without a doubt, I understand it. And this is where, you know, like, when I speak to my mom about the concept store and stuff, and I'm like, some of these people that you want to bring along on, the, bring up onto this are just not built for this. And I don't say in a bad way is, mm. if you're a chef, you know that chef bakers, we're on our feet 12 hours a day, without mm-hmm. a doubt. Some people aren't, it, it sounds great running your own business. And I think, especially cooking business and for some families it sounds like great but you find very quickly who in your family is made for this and who isn't and I know there's some people I know like they ain't mm. made for that kind of life what they're made for is the back end jobs but <laughs> if you've watched have you seen Cake Boss is a great example okay. of like I think there's, he's got his sis. one of his sisters is always in the kitchen giving it, oh, you guys aren't doing this and da, da, da. But when she starts baking, she gets tired and he's just like, you're, you're an admin person. Go and deal with the admin. You like talking to customers and doing mm. the admin. Stay in your lane, fam. Understand mm. your lane and stay in it. Because I always say to people, baking seems glamorous. Mm. It honestly seems glamorous in every type of way. But the reality is it's not as glamorous as you actually think. Because after you've been on your been on your feet for like about you can you can attest to this. Once you've been on your feet for about six hours and you and never look at the clock because knowing that you've got six hours to go, <laughs> that's what kills you. So looking at the clock is not a good habit. I don't, I hardly look at my clock. I just focus on the things to do list and mm-hmm. get them done. But it's not, this, this chef in life is not for everyone. No, a hundred percent. A few things that I want to expand on from what you, you were saying there, like t- speaking on, bon- speaking about people doing stuff in the back end and all <coughs> that, just to bring, I guess, the listeners some value. Yeah. In a previous conversation, I know one of the things you, you spoke about is like, oh, they have a pot washer that can save you some yeah, time, yeah. you know. Um, so being in and just witnessing, I guess, the processes of different um, restaurants using stuff, I think can be like helpful for you. Yeah. And one thing that you know, I know we've spoken in a, in a previous conversation about, which I guess uh, the home cook or the inspiring yeah. chefs or the uh, uh, supper club people are thinking about growing is like menu design. Yeah, menu design is so important because yeah. it's either going to mean a lots of wastage, yeah, or or or, or b you're going to have loads of like unrelated dishes, um, which is going to make you a nightmare in terms of like the type of things you have yeah. to cook within a limited period of time. But unrelated, what I mean is that you know, I guess some of the most successful places they have like a few key ingredients. And they just, you know, they're they're found in each and every dish. And that's that's unfortunately um, one of the troubles that I see, especially with like African and Caribbean restaurants. Yeah. Like for me, one thing I learned over having my cafe is (laughs) like every, like every ingredients that you, every ingredient you have Mm. should really be used in 80% 80% or even not even 80% in 95% of your dishes mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. say if you only have um uh let's say okay say avocado mm. right and you are you only use avocado you only have avocado um on toast or you only use it in your guacamole but your mm. guacamole you only sell guacamole like twice a week why do you have it on your menu because there's just a lot of wastage. Um, if you have something like avocado, you should be able to not just make a guacamole. It mm-hmm. should go in sandwiches. It should go in your jacket potato. You sh- it should go. You see what I mean? So that's one thing that I learned from menu construction that, you know, prawns. Like, what else can we do with the prawns apart from use it in... Um, um, a seafood broth. We're gonna do a pasta. We're gonna do this. Mm-hmm. So it should be that thing should feature on your menu so heavily um, that you are making pro- you are making profit from it. Anything that's not making you profit on your menu should come off. 
and that's one sense. thing that I see on a lot of um, Car- Afro Caribbean menus. Like you have this thing, you you're like, oh, but you know, but it's you know Johnny orders it and Johnny loves that and he comes in especially for that. But Johnny's your only customer who orders it. You, like you have to like, but if only Johnny's ordering it, but you know your other stuff is being ordered like you know. A hundred percent of the time, mm. you gotta forget about Johnny. You gotta let Johnny go because Johnny. What you need to do is reintroduce Johnny to the thing that's selling most, and tell Johnny to jump on that bandwagon, because you can't just be making off of money off of just Johnny. Johnny and that one thing. A hundred percent. The and the only like slight objection I might throw out to that yeah. is that like if you have a lost leader, but this lost leader is bringing so many people through the door. That yeah, they're going to yeah. be buying, like... But obviously. I'm just saying that Johnny's the only one. Has well, in then, yeah. Johnny 1 is not multiplying to Johnny 3000. He's only Johnny just... Johnny just by himself. Yeah, no, then Johnny, yeah. like, it's like... Johnny got to go. He's got to start looking at YouTube and make these... No, Johnny got to be introduced to something else on the menu to, to retain his customer value. That's what it is. Yeah, that's it. Switch it up. Yeah. Um... Also, I got. I want to share as well. Like I've had some small wins uh, yeah. with my my weight. Uh, I've been documenting it on yeah. my fitness pal. Uh, I think you, you've had some wins. I as have. Well. Like okay, so y'all know that I always talk about. I always talk about diet, you know. And I love my food. Like if you watch my Instagram feed, yeah. Like Sunday brunch is just like my thing these days. Like it's always been my thing, but I stopped doing it because I just didn't have no time. But mm-hmm. I love cooking myself a good hearty breakfast like I love it just for me like obviously people have started saying can I come can I come and I'm just like maybe we're gonna start a brunch club who knows who knows but you know um I love cooking for myself and so Mm -hmm. the Simba you know we've been talking about losing weight and all (laughs) of this stuff and I was just like I hate the word diet I think diet like is like my worst the worst word in the world and so the symbol was just like, come on, just do it with me. My fitness pal, we can do this. It was like summer bodies 2020. And I was like, for real, you know what? I don't want to buy new clothes. I actually just want to fit back. And not that I'm, you know, I fit into my clothes, but I want to fit into them comfortably, not with a pinch, not like I'm uh-uh. trying to, you know, like not snug. I want to relax, you know? And so, yeah, I decided like to jump on with him. I'm so, hungry though, now, <laughs> So with that said, with what with what you've been saying about clothes, right? Yeah. Like Primark has been my best friend at the moment. <laughs> I can't lie. Because I refuse to buy extra large and large yeah. clothes. I refuse. It's not happening. Yeah. I'm not spending my money on good clothes for me to just shrink. Yeah. And then I can't wear it no more. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I've been jumping on this My Fitness Pal thing. Yeah. So back in the 3rd of November... Yeah. 2019 I weighed 99.5 kg yeah uh, as of today I weigh 95.4 kg so uh, I'm, I'm on target to hit my, my my target in June I actually made a spreadsheet yeah of my weight that um, I need to uh, be every okay. week like I didn't go that far I think like just knowing that I've got it documented somewhere in the atmosphere <laughs> like in the in the app world was that's what that matters though, really. but I've actually joined another um, site as well oh really which yeah, one yeah Noom Nom? Nom. What does a nom do? Uh, nom. So nom is... Um, okay, so I don't use the word diet. I use conscious eating. Okay. And when I say conscious eating, it's like... Girl, you know you shouldn't be eating six McVitie's biscuits at like 10 o'clock at night. That's not conscious eating, but you can have six grapes instead. That's okay. conscious eating. That's just making um, conscious choices about the food that you eat. You know what I mean? Sure. And um, it's been... That's how I lost weight. Like, it's so funny. Okay. Right, sorry, I'm just digressing. Let me digress this. So oh. beginning of 20, uh, beginning of the last decade, right? 2010. Yeah. Yeah. That was when I first started my weight loss. Okay. And I'm now doing it again in the new decade. And you just, just, just came back to you? No, I was thinking about it like okay. the other day, like when I jumped onto my fitness pal, because sure. I deleted the app, obviously. Yeah, I would have, yeah, yeah. if I didn't, then I would have had the try. But I thought about that and I was like, I remember the beginning of the first, uh, beginning of the last decade, 2020, tw- yeah, 2010, I decided to lose a lot of weight because sure. back then I weighed, I actually weighed like 15 stone. Okay. Yeah, 15. I remember it was like 15, five or something. And then I was like, I'm a big girl. And that, 
I've always been a big girl, mm-hmm. but I was just like, I want to get down because I was nearly borderline, like size 18. And I was just like, no, 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 no. We can't, we cannot be entering like mm-hmm. that. And so that's when I started my weight loss journey. And um, by 2012, yeah, yeah, because it was for a friend's wedding. And I remember we went to Florida. It was around about that time. Um, yeah, 2012, I was like, I got down to like 10 stone. That's a real achievement. And I'm not going to lie, being 10 stone for someone like me, even though I don't, people always say, Nastasha, you don't look like you put on (laughs) that much weight. But Mm. I I know I have like, when I look at those pictures, I'm just like, I was always hungry. I'm not going to lie. Like that size was always hungry. But then Mm. when I put on a little, when I put on a stone and was 11, I felt fuller. Okay, and okay. so that's my aim now. Eleven stone. Okay. So, I started off at thirteen. What was I? I'm thir- I was thirteen. I did a weigh in because I was like, "There's no point of me starting this journey and just pretending that I'm losing." <laughs> pretend, you know, like I pretend to myself that I'm losing weight, sure. but I'm actually just not. Like I'm just like, yeah, I am. But I was like, okay, I'm gonna be serious. If Lucinda can do it, I can do it. 100%. And I and I remember I was just like, hold on, the beginning of last decade, I did it. Like yeah. my, it's it's the mindset. So I weighed myself, and I was thirteen. I was thirteen stone and uh, five pounds. Okay. And I was like, Nastasha, you're a big girl. You're tipping the skirt. And I was just like, no, I'm not that big. I was actually surprised. I I, I thought I'd be like 13, like 11 okay. or 13, 10. So I was surprised. I was like, okay, you're not that much. It's doable, girl. Okay. And um, so I, a week in, um, I joined the app and I've been doing, I'm, I'm not like, listen, was like really, really detailed in how he counts his calories <laughs> and his microns. He tried, the other day, like, let me tell you what listen was it. I text him and I said to him, I'm having porridge. I'm having oats so simple. And I usually have it with golden syrup, but I'm having the plain one because I'm like, oh, it's knocking off a few calories. I'm being conscious, less sugar is conscious, <laughs> yeah. And I'm having it with almond milk. And the Simba says to me, oh, have it with water. It'll be like, it's going to be less for you. I'm just like, who the heck do you think you are? Like, who's having porridge with water, fam? It's not, It's that's not the way forward. At least let me have small indulgences. <laughs> like, you're actually asking me to substitute everything for water and that, fam? Like, like okay, you do it's that on your... Bad. No, 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 no. Like, you can do that. I just want, that's my small win. That's my small indulgence. Okay, in the cool. morning because I can't wake up and have a slice of cake anymore. So, you know, yes, it, I, <laughs> I do. Cake for breakfast. I, cake 24, 7, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. We're doing this. Okay. What cake with what? Like tea? No, no, just the slice of cake, fam. Like, what, what do you drink? What's it down with? Um, Coffee. A cup okay. of coffee. So I have cereal, cake and coffee. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Some people have like cereal, toast, and tea. No, 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 no. We have to have a slice of cake, fam. It's, it's the way forward. This is the indulgent sugar plum. What are we talking about? Are you, I'm not living up to my name. <laughs> For real. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, as I was saying, I digressed a little bit. So I was there in point five mm. um, last week, Friday, and I did a weigh-in this week, and I'm 13, one pound. So I lost like four pounds. Well done. And I'm really like for my first week, I'm actually really, really proud of myself because mm-hmm. let me tell you, I've been hungry. <laughs> I think, but I think the hunger is just in my head. You know, when you say mm-hmm. you're hungry, you become hungry for no apparent re- reason. Yeah. You know what it is? Okay, cool. So one thing I used to do, yeah. I don't know if you were doing it. Yeah. Eating when you're bored. Yeah, I do. Like sometimes, yeah, honestly, like when I'm waiting for something, I'm like, what can I chuck in my mouth? Mm-hmm. Not like that. That came across <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I know listening to that meant, what can you chuck? Is that? No, not like that. Okay. But I'm just saying, what can I, what can I occupy my, you know, like my jaws are not moving. So I'm like, what can I occupy? I'm not talking. So let me find something to occupy my jaw with. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> so therefore I just eat. Same, no, even if like you're watching a film, it's like, oh, I want to watch a film. I'm going to watch a oh, meme with anime. Yeah. And just like, oh, let me let me eat something. It yeah. might be cake. It might yeah. be crisps. It might be cereal. I, I used to eat a lot of like Cocoa Pops at night, bananas at night, toast, toast and peanut butter. Yeah, just, you see like stuff like that, yeah. like toast, peanut butter, like one of my snacks actually, which is quite healthy, like on brown bread or okay. multigrain bread, like um, 
toasted peanut butter with uh, slices of banana and a drizzle of honey. That's very, very filling. And okay. if you for especially after gym, that after gym is really really good for what, you. what bread do you eat i don't really eat bread because i'm a bread ma- i'm a bread maniac i don't know how to have one slice of bread we must go like you see that bun yeah you know jamaican bun loaf yeah. yeah that's i can do that half of that like in the morning and be okay what? <laughs> <laughs> like bread isn't like i love bread and one of the things is i've really cut down on like bread like starchy like that carby foods like that like when it's conscious eating like that um noom or nom app is really really good because what it is it's not a diet it's honestly conscious eating and for example one of the questions they they give you a questionnaire to fill out to see what your eating habits are okay and um one of the questions on this questionnaire said um what's more what what's better for you um a hundred grams of raisins yeah. or a hundred grams of grapes. Okay. What do you think? What's a better for you? Yeah. hundred grams of raisins, hundred grams of grapes. Mm. I would suggest they're equal. No, it's not. It's better okay. for you to have a hundred grams of grapes. You know why? Why? Because of the water content. Raisins are like even though they come from it it's basically dried grapes they're sweeter Mm. and they have much more sugars in them whereas if you have the grapes grapes are water okay that means that your but you're going to be fuller for longer because of water you know when they say like drink water when you're hungry and it's because sometimes you're not hungry you're thirsty Mm, 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 your body's mm, 80 percent water Mm, 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 mm. so therefore you're gonna lose more weight if you're eating more water-based products if that makes sense how much water do you drink <laughs> government juice no not, not which <laughs> water but how much water you drink oh how much <laughs> oh <my God> <laughs> i just said i just drink government juice honestly i'm tired of it um, how much water do I drink a day? Mm. I'm trying to drink what they say that I should be drinking. How much do they say I should be drinking? Some gallons or something. Like, is it? Gallons? Um, no, no, like two litre bottles. Oh, two litres, yeah. Okay, cool. Like, I'm trying to drink that, but it doesn't mean that I do. Honestly, I have a very, very low water intake, but I'm trying to at least drink, starting off with make sure I'm drinking a litre. A litre doesn't sound like a lot, but trust me, I drink a lot of juices and I'm replacing the juices with the water. So it's funny. um, If I go gym, because I haven't been gym this week because I've been feeling a bit ill. Uh, I think you gave me a cold last week, I think. Whatever, listen, but But, yeah, you travel a a lot on public transport. Therefore, it could have been. Are you sure? It's a coronavirus. (laughs) What? (laughs) We'll touch on that. Yeah, I know. I know. It's not me. And no, um, that's not even a joke. It's not the coronavirus, but. Yeah, it's no, there's no wood here for me to touch. But anyway, yeah. Um, what was I saying? What was I saying? Yeah, you haven't been gym this week. Yeah, okay, cool. I haven't been gym this week because I've been feeling a bit ill. When yeah. I do go gym... You drink more water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I drink perhaps about two and a half litres to... Yeah, two and a half litres per day. Because in the gym alone, I'll knock out about one mm-hmm. and a half to two. Yeah, that And then the rest sense. of the day, I can drink the rest. But outside of that, I'm probably drinking about a litre and a half. Okay. A day, so no, that makes sense. When I when I when I start gymming, <laughs> when I did go to the gym back in the day, I would be knocking out. I drank like gallons of water a day because, especially in the gym, like you said, it's very easy. It was very easy for me in the gym mm-hmm. to do a liter, liter and a half. And so, but when I don't dr- when I don't dr- um, gym, I'm very kind of like, oh, I want an apple juice. I want ribena. I want I want a juice. I want flavored water. You know, it's funny. I don't like I, I it's weird. I don't drink juice like now. Like I yeah. love juice, but like since I'm starting this whole thing, I don't drink juice. But what's really strange and I don't know why, mm-hmm. like ever since working in this restaurant like yeah. for a week, when I leave a hard shift, yeah. my body's craving juice. I can't explain it. But what it's craving for is like a really green smoothie. So then I actually ran... That's a very specific craving. Yeah, like almost like, well, I'm not pregnant, but yeah. like... 
<laughs> I ran to Tesco to actually find one. And, you know, I couldn't find an out-and-out green smoothie, green juice. So what I mean mm-hmm. by that, you know, when you look at, like, small print of all yeah. these juices, where it, even though it says it's uh, and green... And not all of them are good for you, you know. Some of them have been dyed to look green just to... There's know? that, there's yeah. that. But also, as well, some of them have got fruits in it, yeah. right? But I want to just... I want, like, kale, celery, cucumber, but they've got, you like... do that yourself, see? That's what I realised. Yeah. Like, which, is, which is interesting, because I thought... Okay, surely after all these years of people like liking juice and stuff like that, no. sorry, like green smoothies, like yeah. you should be able to buy one with no fruits in it. But like that's all I can No, find. you. I think for me, when it comes to that smoothie stuff, unless you're not smoo- doing it yourself at home, the things in the shop are just actually just full of sugars. Do you juice? Um, I used to when I had okay. a juicing machine. I don't have one now. Uh, where is the juicing machine? Oh, I left it at my nan's. Um, okay. My sister had this really cool one, really simple one, which had a bottle attached and you just yeah, put yeah. all this stuff in the bottle. Oh, like a Nutribullet? Yeah, okay. yeah, one of those kind of ones. Um, I do want, you know what? I do want to get one, but <sighs> the thing is like, I don't They're like pee, too many. Huh? Huh? They're pee. I, I know, but the thing is, I don't like too many gadgets. Okay, okay, okay. Like, okay. I need to get a hand blender, and I'm just trying to figure out a way of not to have a hand blender, that there's an other way that I can do it. But then again, if I get, like, one of those juices, I that could also work as my hand blender for soups and stuff. So I don't like having too many, like, equipment. I mean, I have a mixer, and I'm just yeah, like, yeah. for me, minimal. I'm very minimalist. I don't sure. like to have... I like pure gadgets in the kitchen i always try and that's why i love kenwood because mm. you can buy all of the attachment like that comes with a blender mm, okay. but with the the machine that i got recently they didn't it they didn't send the attachments which i'm just still trying to get out of them so <laughs> once i get that I'll, I'll be fine i think i'm gonna start um juicing like yeah uh, i've not done it before but i think yeah i'm gonna start like buying my greens and stuff and start uh, my favorite one to do was beetroot beetroot i yeah, actually don't beetroot like beetroot what? oh don't you no, i think I'll i think if i do juice. yeah no 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 it has a juice i used to love doing beetroot mm. juices oh i want to try that um earlier i asked you about bread i yeah. put it on my phone while you're speaking because i want to let the people know yeah. all right cool obviously like artisan bread or whatever is going to taste better or whatever yeah, you yeah. like a proper deli but outside of that have you tried Allison bread the farmhouse one no is it nice <sighs> this bread like I can I can literally like wax off the not the whole loaf but like half like half, <laughs> half and just toast is and peanut good? butter yeah the far, if you get the farmhouse Allison bread um wholemeal that stuff is really all right i'm really gonna try because nice. i don't really you know what i don't really eat bread bread like that i oh. like i'll like at home i'll purchase like wraps okay and i'll have um like brioche buns okay. and i'll have it's because it depends on what i want to eat that week so if i want like i like making a fish finger wrap but we're gonna have to scale down on that due a to fish this. finger wrap yeah like leon taught me on it and i make my own one with some perinose and okay. yeah, it's it bangs, man. Freaking and is that awesome. homemade perinase as well? No, you not every day. Nando's, yeah. one. Nando's one because it's already done. It's already there. It's okay. not every. You know what? It's it's, it's funny because as a baker, people ask you how much of your own stuff. Like there was one person who mm. said to me, "Did I make my own jam?" And I was like, "Babes, I would love to, but I'm not going to that extent because I don't have the time to be making my own jam." I do make my own compote for certain re- cake recipes because I like my own compote. But if it's jam to, you know, if it's jam to fill a cake, that's why that's that's why there's jams there. You, you know, know. <laughs> so there is a part yeah. of it. It's just kind of like asking McDonald's, do you cut your own potatoes to make your chips? They're gonna look at you and go. You know what that's uh, all I say is that some of your favorite places, like you know, stuff's pre-made. Sorry to burst everybody's bubbles. There you go. <laughs> um, speaking of like, uh, well, food, it is a food podcast and stuff. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's speak about uh, bat soup. Okay, during the week, Lesimba sent me, <laughs> he sent me this tweet, yeah, but I'd already seen it on Twitter and I was just like, you know, people are wild. Like, and I, 
when it comes to food, one thing I do, I'm, I'm adventurous, but I know my limits in adventure, adventure when it comes to food. And one of my favorite sayings is I keep it popular. And by when I say I keep it popular, I'm, I mean, I don't eat, I don't eat pork. Um, uh, some people in my family do, it's up to their preference, but I just don't. Um, I, I keep it popular by say, when I say I keep it popular, I eat beef, chicken, goat, and if sheep, you want to include that. And then in terms of, and then fish. And even when, we, when we get come to fish, yeah, there are things that I'll try. But it's not an everyday thing. Okay. You know what I mean? It's not every day. It's not every day we're eating calamari. It's not every day I'm eating wild seafood, isn't it? Okay. When I say even fish, like mm. there are specific fishes that I eat. Like, you know, we're going to sea bream. Um, sea bream? Not yeah. this one. Huh? I've not had sea bream. I like sea bream as a good fish. What do you, what do you tend to have that with? I like it how my mum does it. So she just opens it up and grills it. Salt, pepper, mixed herbs lemon in the grill really good very okay. simple don't don't over spice it just really that's good. one thing i like about fish you, you, you don't it doesn't need a lot of seasoning. yeah 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 you flavors know, like very in the very flesh. simple so we're gonna keep it sea bream is it called just red fish okay just red red one and then there's uh there's another one what's it tilapia i like that one snapper that, that's the one, snapper. My favorite fish is snapper. Snapper's nice. Yeah. And then there's also another one. There's there's sea bream and there's something else. You know, like a uh, like a grilled snapper with like some festival. Oh, you haven't had a festival yet. I was tempted to buy one. I, I was tempted to go to my local Caribbean. No, actually, I did go to the local Caribbean this week. I was actually really, really hungry that day. And I hadn't eaten lunch or dinner. And I just had a wild amount of food. But it was still within my calorie count. So it's fine, people. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that day, I had a wild... Okay, that day, I, I went to McDonald's. I had a McDonald's wrap. But mm. I counted the calories because it was a sweet chili. It didn't have mayo, so it was fine. And okay. then... Um, I had I had medium fries and then after that I had a patty, but it was still within all of my calorie count. So yeah, okay, that's conscious eating right there, done, they're done correctly. But obviously then the app started telling me, oh this one is high in fat. So I was just like, shut up, <laughs> shut up. Not every day, you know. Um, so that's how I keep it. If I mm. want to go into exotic seafood, and when I say exotic seafood, it is re- literally, I'll have prawns. Mm. There's different types of prawns. So I'll have the king prawns. There's some other kind of prawns that look like, yeah, we don't do that one because it's looking kind of funky in real life. We, nah, you know, so keep it king prawns. Okay. Then we have, I will, ch- I do like a little bit of calamari. I have tried octopus, but I, you know, I know my limits. We're not having octopus every single day, you know. Um, um, what else have I? What else will I try? There's something else. Snail, escargot. No, 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 no. We don't do them things. There. Have you never tasted it? No, we're not doing that. That shit is slimy. Like, you know, there's something. You know what? There's just. I just look at some things and I'm just like, I know my limits. Yeah, yeah, Every yeah, yeah. people can do it, sure. and I'm happy for someone to do it and tell me how it tastes. But I know my digestive system. I have, you know, I've lived, <laughs> with, I've lived with my digestive system. I've lived with my internal organs for like 34 gracious years and I get it. Sure. And I pay attention to what can go down because and go down and be settled, not what can go down and come back up and out through the other side. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so okay. I know myself. And I know my limits in it. I place boundaries. Sometimes we want to get excited. Like I said, when I tried octopus, it was a little piece, got excited. It went down. It weren't trying to settle quickly. And I was like, it's not for me. Cool. I know my limits. Um, what is it? So there was something else. Like, my mind's just gone blank. Oh, lobster. Yeah. Um, scallops. Okay. We'll do that. Cat. N- catfish. No, 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 no. No, cat. No, 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 we don't do that. But I'm sure I've, you know, with the way KFC was moving back in the day, so I'm sure that we digested a bit of cat back then. <laughs> Sorry, KFC. But, you know, um, what else? So I said, look. That you don't eat. No, I'm just saying exotic seafood that oh. people go out for. Does calamari count? 
Yeah, I, 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 I'll do calamari. Uh, what's that fish eggs thing called? Caviar. Have I tried caviar? I haven't tried caviar. Okay. But it's... No, I have. I did try caviar and the texture wasn't for me. Yeah, same. I, I tried oyster and that texture wasn't for me either. That I need to try. No, no that was not did my... You... <laughs> did you... Did you take... You did know you what it is? It? Uh, I think I just, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't crunch. I just went, I just let it go down and that didn't settle. Okay. That took me, oh, that took a while to settle. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. after that, like I couldn't even sip the wine and just, you know, usually mm. drink water and it helped. Mm -mm, that one wasn't settling for a while. That, that I had to, like, that took time. So I was just like, that's not my portion in life. That's not my calling. Um, what else? Muscles aren't really my calling either. No, I don't like and muscles. those ones that, that breathe out of the tube, what's it called? What are they called? And people love those. The ones we pull the salt on the sand and they come up. Razor fish, is it? No, no, oh. no. There's this, um, they, they're, in <laughs> they're in tubes. It's in like some sort of plant and they kind of breathe. And, you know, you have to s pull, put it out, pull it out of the tube. I forgot what it's called. Like, okay. Um, that stuff, somebody probably knows what it's called and screaming like, no, I is this, whatever. You know what I'm talking about, that that stuff. No, 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 we don't do them to stuff there. So we just keep it popular. And that's how I keep it. Like, I, I, you know what it is, is growing, like, as a child, I was one of those kids that wanted to try everything, you know? And the first time I went to Zimbabwe, I got like food poisoning and it wasn't like, being sick on holiday was an experience and it's not an experience that I want to relive. I was out yeah. in Zimbabwe um, for three months and for two, two and a half weeks out of that three months, I was lying on a sofa because I had food poisoning and I had food coming out from both ends. You know what I mean? And I wasn't, you know, water, nothing was settling in my stomach. And after having that experience, I just knew, Nastasha, this, these all internal organs you have in, in, within you, yeah, take care of them. And they're not designed to eat everything. So once you understand that, yeah, I'm not that, like, I'm adventurous, but I know my limits. I will try, but there's some things that I look, when I see the animal in real life, I know it's not my portion in life to eat you. So I'm cool for somebody else to try. <laughs> You're laughing. It's just like, okay, dig this, right? Mm. I won't eat uh, a chicken that has been um, freshly, freshly slaughtered. You say you won't or you will? I won't. Why? I need that to be dead for at least like five, because I can smell it. I can smell the blood. I can smell everything. And I feel like, yo, you were just, me and you were homies just five minutes ago. And now... I'm gene you up in my belly. You know, so... <laughs> so there's a mental thing that happens where okay. I start to smell like... Mm. I feel like I can smell the grains that you were eating five minutes ago before I slaughtered you. So it's crazy that I won't eat it. And I remember, like, <laughs> my first trip back to Zim after not being there, for like, after coming to this country when I was a year old, yeah. I went to the village, like to my father's side of the family. And um, it was the first time that I'd been there. So has a celebration. One of the things that they do is like, they kill a cow in it. Mm -hmm. They killed loads of different, they were like, we're gonna kill a cow for you. We're gonna kill some chickens for you. And this is there from their farm because yeah. like my, um, my grandparents had their own farms. They had loads of like, you know, they had farms and shops and stuff. So my granddad was like, I'm going to kill a cow for you. I'm going to kill a goat for you. I'm qu killing like 10 chickens for you. Right. And I was like, wow, this is exciting. I was like, this is, this is exciting. And in my head, I was just, and then my nan was just like, my nan was looking at my granddad while he was talking and she was just shaking her head. And my nan was like this, she ain't eating any of that. And my granddad, and my nan knew that like, once I've seen, that she, I'm not eating it. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not eating it. And then my granddad was so insistent that I come and watch these things being slaughtered. And my nan was like to him, like, yo, this is not a good idea. Like Nastasha's not going to eat. Like mm -hmm. I know what this is going to do to her because apparently when I was younger, they used to take me, whenever they took me meat, meat my, <laughs> to the meat shop, right? I used to see those hanging boiler chickens yeah. and I loved 
I mean, back in the day, like growing up, I loved animals and I really wanted a dog. But my nan instead, she was like, ain't nobody taking care of a dog in this country. Yeah, she'd buy me loads of stuffed animals. Mm. And so when I saw these boiler chickens being hung up, I used to cry and I literally would like she said there was one time I made the biggest scene in this meat shop saying how horrible people were that how could you slaughter the nice chicken and then I would be crying and then obviously my nan's bought the chicken and she's cooking it and she said for a good portion of my life like when I was younger she said probably at least like a year I didn't eat chicken I stopped eating meat completely okay and then she said there was just this one day that i said i wanted chicken and i started eating i stopped i literally became vegetarian so i'm very kind of like if i see animals being slaughtered Mm. live and direct and in africa obviously this is like they do it in a humane way it's Mm. not like done in an unhumane way Mm. um i just won't eat it and i can just smell it i can just like Yo, I'm smelling the blood. And <laughs> let me tell you. So let me tell you this story, like, when I've gone to Africa. Yeah. So being back in Zim and my uncle, like, my, not my uncle, my granddad is like, I, like, come and watch these chickens being slaughtered because it's nothing. And then he told me, once a chicken has been slaughtered, you're going to pick the feathers off of this chicken. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm just like, in my head, still to this day, there's no way we're getting involved in that in it. Like if I, I I'll pick the I'll do the pick the the feathers off the chicken mm-hmm. yeah but it doesn't mean I'm eating it with you you guys gonna eat it I need that thing to be I need to remove the images of that trauma of that within my head and then eat it when it's dead dead like two weeks later mm-hmm. or a week later right so I was just like man like in my head as a child I'm just like man I have to watch this chicken these chickens being slaughtered so obviously. Yeah. Then my cousins are like, oh, when we slaughter the chickens, do you know that the chicken will run around without its head? I'm just like, in my head, I'm just like, what like what the heck is going on? But it's actually true. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah, actually yeah. actually true. So anyway, cut the long story short. So I didn't watch the cow being slaughtered because they take them to the slaughterhouses. That's that's big man thing, isn't it? That's big man job, you know. Mm. But I then had to endure watching the goat and the chickens. So they're busy, like, slaughtering these chickens in the humane way. I'm saying it like, slaughtering. They were doing their thing and Mm -hmm. um, killing the chickens in a humane way. And I would say, like, the way that my grandfather, my grandparents on my father's side, they do say a little prayer before they do it. So it eases, like, and it's very very calm. But then I watched them kill these chickens and I was like, fam, okay, cool cool and then one of them was flapping without its head on and i was just like oh god like it ain't even got its head and it's still alive like yo (laughs) it's still beating like yo and then afterwards like they've done it and they've hung it and they've let the blood come out and they're like yeah nastasha let's come and pick the feathers off the chicken and you see my cousins all running to do this and i'm just like what and no word of a lie obviously if everybody that if you're someone in the industry who does this the chicken Mm. was hella still warm like and I was just like this is all mad traumatic for me and I felt like when I was picking those feathers off the chicken I really felt like I can still feel its heart beating <laughs> in my head sure, that sure, heart sure. was still beating and my nan and I was doing it scared like I was like picking it like Oop. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I was yeah. mad scared to do it. And then my nan says to me, oh, stop being scared. Do it with, do it with your chest. And I'm just like, fam, I'm coming from England. Like, we do not, like, I ain't never, we do not have farms for this, to, for mm. me to see this happen. Like, yo, like, this is first time. And my cousins are doing it. Yo, they're picking their fast. And, and so afterwards, yeah, you know, they cooked the chicken. And all I could smell from that chicken was blood. I could smell blood and I felt like I could I could literally taste what the chicken also ate like before we slaughtered it. And I was just like, this is not an experience for me. So therefore, I couldn't eat the chicken. And the, the beef even like yeah. the goat and be- I was just like, no, all I can smell is blood here. And then they were, it was mad because then my grandfather was like, oh, don't you like chicken? Oh, why are you not eating the chicken? And then my nan had to explain to him like, yo, this is why I said, don't let her see, like, don't ask her to be involved in it because she's not going to eat it. And I don't eat it. So even sometimes when I yeah. go to the meat market, I've had to build like 
even the meat market, even the fish market. There's even, I don't know if I told you a story about like when my nan went once again, like in Africa, she says we're going to buy fish. Lo and behold, do I know that we're going to a riverside where, they, <laughs> where, where they're okay. freaking catching like it. catching the live fish and asking her which live fish she wants. Sure, sure. And then after she asked me to hold the bag with the live fish in it. And then moving. Fam! I, like, I, jo- I was just like, you see these things here. And then when we get home and I was just like, and she was like, oh, why are you scared in the back? Why are you jumping? I was just like, the fish is still flapping on. And she was like, why are you scared of a fish for? <laughs> Like, you're like honestly, honestly, when you the fish are strong, you know. Fam, we were in the car for an hour, and I looked down, and the fish is like looking up at me. What kind of fish was it? Oh, it was like I know it wasn't a catfish because I don't like catfish. Okay. Um, I can't. I don't know. I'm not very good with names of fish. Okay, okay. But like, it was like a water fish. I of course. (laughs) Oh. oh my gosh, what like, was it was, uh, not that fishes can go, I just call what I said, a water, of course it's a water damn fish, <laughs> like, you can get land fishes, actually, no, it's because, you know, like, catfish, you know, yeah. like, they they live in dirty water, Okay. Yeah, they can yeah. survive in really, and they can survive out of water for hours, okay, 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 so that's the only thing that saved me, <laughs> like, that's why I got some pure one-liners, like, just on the show, but yeah, back to what I was saying, like, so, for me, I can't really, I'm very sensitive to when it comes to meat Mm. and fish. So I'm like with fresh fish, even like with fresh fish, sometimes I feel like I can swim. I'm eating the ocean. I'm I'm feeling like Little Mermaid was happening just five minutes ago. You know, so the only reason I know about like this whole headless chicken thing is I remember, it must have been about 10, we were in Jamaica and mom killed a chicken um i didn't have to get involved in the cooking or the yeah, cleaning yeah. or anything like that uh but i can't lie when we ate the chicken later and the fact that i even remember it is that it was one of the best tasting chickens <laughs> like, i thought you were gonna say oh i could taste the blood too nah, <laughs> but, that but, chicken tasted bad but yeah. it's funny with what you're saying i realized that like it's it, just it's just the it's actually the chicken didn't actually taste of any it's just the tr- like for me, my mind went back. My mind still had those experience. It was the experience. Therefore, this experience lingered on. So what I was going to say, and I get it. If I had to catch my own meat. Yeah. And there's no Tesco, Asda, Sainsbury's, Walmart. Yeah. Like, I think I'd eat a lot less meat. I you think know, we, I'd, I, I, it, I know I'd, be, I'd be a vegetarian straight up. <sighs> I don't know. I think I'd, I'd, I'd think the craving would make me at least kill once a month, but I, I don't think I'd kill very... I, I might even consider going vegetarian. might even consider going... Because I don't think I would want to go through having to kill every... Because the amount of chicken I eat. Yeah. Imagine if I have to kill that chicken every day. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't even think... Like, that's the thing. Like, when I was... Whenever I go back to Zim, I don't really eat that much chicken. Mm. I don't eat that much meat. Maybe I do. I don't know. But I, I do think... Actually, I am probably eat more meat in, Af- in when I'm um, in Zim than I am here because the meat does taste better. But this is meat that I haven't seen killed or experienced or like, hey, me and you were just G's five minutes ago, five minutes ago and now you're in my stomach. No, it's not that one. You know, like, okay, it's touching on this whole like eating foods that you, talking about foods that you eat and yeah. you don't eat. One particular food that I'm very close to giving up like i mean i'm I'm about like trying everything at least yeah. once to within yeah. reason like for example like i've had snail before yeah. um but octopus octopus is one i'm really considering how uh, often do you eat octopus to, to talk about it like you're giving <laughs> like my guy's eating octopus like every other day no nah, no nah, not not saying that nah, but like once at a in a while or a blue moon i might come across some octopus but like yeah. what's making me like think about it a lot is that like octopuses are very intelligent and are mm. very like conscious i don't know if they're animals mammals or, but like, all animals are very conscious and they're all very intelligent yeah, okay cool I, so you say animals... like octopus isn't as intelligent as like all the other ones that you don't eat aren't as intelligent. Octopuses have just been shown to have a real high level of intelligence. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't know, like, could you you eat a person? 
you know, like, it's just that. Well, like, we don't want to talk about cannibalism, do we? No, but, you know. No, but I'm just saying this, like, it just makes me, f- like, have, like. If we're on a desert island, yeah, and we were trapped, yeah, would you okay. eat me? And it's just us two. Yeah, and there was no food and we're really, like. Like, it depends how long we were there for. Like, we've been there for... We've been stranded. And there's no food. Yeah. Depends how long we're there for. If, if, we're, if we're approaching, like, 90 days, you might lose I mean, a leg. I know I would eat you. Like, I'm not even going to lie. One of us has got to survive and tell the story. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't lie. You might lose a leg. You know. uh, no, it's because I watched the film and that's what basically happened. Which one was it? Maybe Dick. I don't. I know of the story, but I don't know. The okay, story. it's the, like the screenplay that happened. Um, okay. With what's his name? Chris. Is it Chris? Chris Hemsworth. Okay. Thor. Thor was. Oh oh yeah. oh! I like him. He's a cool yeah, actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just to let yeah yeah go go back to what you're saying about not eating octopus because they're hella intelligent and you feel bad about it. No, that that was it on that point. Because I, I still haven't made up my mind and stuff, but, you know, uh, that does play a bit in my Just head. Just stop eating the octopus. They're too intelligent. Okay. But going back to what we were talking about, about the bat soup, yeah? I was going through all of those foods that I don't eat and digressed into that story. Anyway, you know, like, things like bat, like, I'm going to be, like, kind of like 100, not even kind of, like 100. I just don't think bats are meant to be eaten. Not everything that, not every animal is supposed to be digested by the human um the human body and i say this because like do you know what bats do during their spare time do you know the extracurricular activities that that bat is doing i'm not saying that we what don't do, they do like no i'm just saying that you don't know with these pla- you know like okay so bats extracurricular like, activities. let me tell you okay so let me explain this because it, it's it all sounds kind of mad like when i say this but <clears throat> I'm not saying we don't know what the the cows and the chicken get up to, but they are, I I don't like it. I don't like the sound of it, but they are farmed in an environment, in a okay. cold, controlled environment. Therefore, we understand it. There there is safety to eat it. Yeah, not we've had mad cow disease and stuff and okay. uh, and stuff like that. But the reg there is a it there's regulations. Okay, w- within those within that animals for us to consume healthily uh, yeah okay bats you're going into a cave and just plucking any bat do you know what that bat has been doing you know like flies right people hate flies around food why because flies go and sit in shit and they're going to sit in every single piece of shit right and then they're coming to land on your food mm. but in that piece of shit how do you know there's not no disease on that piece of shit and it's coming to land on your food and you're going to eat it that's what i'm saying about bats you don't know what they're doing you don't know the extracurricular activities that bats are doing but you're all going there to pick it up in a cave and then putting it in and making bat soup and then afterwards we're getting all of these viruses that can't be cured because yo your digestive your digestive system is saying yo like <laughs> i caught two two viruses and these two two viruses Aren't, can't be you know you have to then go and make up an antibiotic to to heal the the two two viruses do you see what i'm saying like there is con- like not everything not everything for consumption yeah some things just look at it and say it's pretty and walk on by so just to give people <laughs> some 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 context I, like it's been said that potentially yeah i just went off in a tangent not even telling people why i'm going off into this tangent but potentially bat soup may have been uh one of the sources of coronavirus yeah so coronaviruses hit the the um china and um there's been i think is it i don't want to talk about figures that i don't know but from my memory if it serves me correctly there has been i want to say 800 cases but i'm not sure if that's the correct number i may just be plucking that from the air but, uh, there's um, a lot. They're meant to even be at what what I read, building a whole new hospital. Uh, for how this. many how many people has this virus infected? Uh, okay, so coronavirus is um, because okay, the, coronavirus is yeah something that's you know been hit. China's been hit with it, but at the same time, um, if we remember a couple of years ago, China was hit with the neurovirus, mm. and the neurovirus came from bats. Yeah. And um, it came from, uh, uh, I think they said, 
bats that were cooked from a certain region and that hit out everyone and people been ever since like neurovirus is now something that lives in our society but can be treated apparently the treatment for it there is no treatment for it it's just kind of like it will go away by itself kind of thing but with the coronavirus now what happens i don't know if people like from what i know <laughs> from my very very small science knowledge brain that when a new vi when a new strain of a virus comes out it's treated by antibiotics now in the field of medicine i know there's probably going to be a doctor listening to this i'm not saying i'm an expert i'm just talking about the base very very basics from what i've listened to and what i've heard when a new virus comes out um an antibiotic um they need an antibiotic to um, counteract it. And what they have to do is create a new anti... Sometimes they, they'll test the antibiotics which are on the market now. And if all of those fail, they actually need to make a new antibiotic to counteract the new virus. So what they do is usually they take the virus, um, pump it into something. I don't like saying animal testing, but they will either tr get a patient or when uh or yeah basically take blood from a patient with that with that virus then try all of the strains of the anti um all the antibiotics if the antibiotics that are currently on the market fail they have to go to their labs and create a new antibiotic a new antibodies to counteract this and this is why um and what they do is they try and contain the virus and by containing the virus, that means obviously where the virus has been found, they will cordon it off. Everybody wears white suits and blah, blah, blah. And that's what they've tried to do in China. But what's happened is um, now that they've, they've contained it and found that it happened in a certain region, now that they're finding there had been other visitors in that region, like as in uh, tourists and stuff, now it's a manhunt to find all of the tourists that were in that region round about the time that the virus broke out and literally test these people. Now, these people, now they're saying that there's been 2000 people that um, have come from China recently or Chinese nationals. I don't know if it's Chinese nationals, but people who've come from China in the time that they've, um, time that the virus was first found uh, up until now, that they need to contact all of these 2000 people that have now entered the UK because um, I think they said like there was a few people that was in Scotland and Ireland that were that had just come back from China and they had to be tested. Um, but they found them to be negative of it. Now they, there's a race against time to find nearly 2000 people. <laughs> um, so just to quote what Telegraph was saying, yeah. they're saying 2000 people in China have been infected. Okay, so 800 was like a small number. So it's now 2000. And 56 killed. Uh, I think there's 50 something in the UK that have been found. Oh me. yeah, but they need to find the rest of the people. They've only found a few people. Well, 50 is just a few in comparison. And um, viruses like this spread like wildfire because mm. it's, um, it's uh, what is it? It's, uh, what do they call, what's the word that they use for it? It's, um, what? How to, how people catch a virus? It's like a cold, oh, basically. Very can, contagious. Yeah, it's contagious. So it will be through a cold. So any bacteria from that person could um, touch being around someone who's just generally come from the country, and it's very hard to contain because it. I think they want to put it on a global alert now, because um, yeah, it's it's a race against time for them to find the right antibodies to um, to literally kill the virus. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's scary. Uh, I'm I started to think of Contagion. Contagion. The film Contagion, where basically it's something. If you've seen Contagion, that that um, that virus started from a pig. If you haven't watched oh. the film, sorry for the spoiler, but it came out okay, ages spoiler ago. Spoiler alert. Like, it's, uh, sorry, that film came out ages ago. And yeah, so... Wait, was that the end of the film, where it came from? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I'm just saying it's like the film Contagion out here, fam. Like, you know, and um, I read a tweet the other day that somebody, you know, like Twitter is the wild, wild west. I'm not even going to lie. I've started slowly getting back into Twitter. I don't tweet, but I re- retweet things and I read things. Let me tell you, I have to, and now I get why people say that Twitter is much more entertaining than um, Instagram. Yeah, Twitter's full of madness. Yeah. Twitter's the wild, wild west, especially like black Twitter. Shout out black Twitter because y'all mm-hmm. keep that. Without black Twitter, Twitter would not be entertaining. Let me see. Let me. Some of the tweets, <laughs> some of the things people say is just like, yo, like it's it's mad. It's the wild, wild west out there. But some of the tweets I read, like it was just like, oh, Chinese people wearing masks, like you can't be near them. And it's just, it, it does become quite scary when you start to see people wearing masks and you're just like, it's it's scary basically you know the thing is though about the mask thing look so anybody from i guess uh china or japan or that part of the world can correct me and let me know i do know well i say i know i think i know that in japan you know when they i guess generally ill yeah it's their thing to wear a mask so you might see them on the tube like oh, yeah 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 mask when they're ill so it might i don't know maybe that's part of chinese culture as well no I, I i i agree like i i've heard something like that that okay. generally when people in china are ill they it's like i think i don't know if it's a requirement but people wear masks yeah, yeah. almost like, just stop yeah your... to, to stop um the infection the the infection the viruses from spreading which mm. you which is fair it makes sense it makes yeah. sense like I, i'm not against it i'm just like yo you're protecting yourself because like on the tube here you have you <laughs> you know what i mean there's, there's let me let's not ju- let me let me tell ugh. you know like just you know my basic thing is if you're coughing on the tube just hand over your mouth why why do we need to why do we need to do and this is why do we need to do coffin fit to infect everyone nobody knows what this cough is that you've got and this is the thing about like viruses because um a friend of mine was telling me over christmas um he one of his children he was supposed to go to nigeria for christmas he didn't end up going because one of his um children were sick they caught a bug and she couldn't keep any food down and she had a stomach bug but I was like, oh, that's really sad. But he was like, Nastasha, let me tell you, if you went to like they they were in a and um they were in hospital from the twenty third of like she was like we're in there before Christmas to mm. after we came out on the twenty seventh after Boxing Day. Mm-hmm. He was like, when you went to see when you when he went A and E, there was like a sea of children. Mm-hmm. It was like there was a bug that was just going around, and that the hospital said they didn't know what it was, but all they mm-hmm. know is like they've got an epidemic with loads of kids in in the thing, um in the hospital the thing about like all of these viruses and this is the thing about it as well like in nurseries kids are so susceptible to catch like viruses because the thing is like if you even see little kids like bless their little Mm. cotton socks like kids are just like (laughs) like coughing everywhere and one you know some kids wiping their when they got cold they just wipe their nose and then they go and touch a railing i understand why school teachers are always ill because they're, they're just picking up these little viruses from these kids and kids pass on germs to other kids in the school like one one kid has a one kid in the class has a cold understand five mm. of them are going to come with a cold five six even the teacher will probably have a cold just from that one kid so these viruses be spreading like wild fa- wild fire you know it's funny speaking about that and like vaccines and all of that stuff um the other day i don't know if i told you or not yeah, yeah. i got a text message from um uh, my doctor, my yeah. GP, saying that um, your son needs to get um, checked in for his MMR vaccine. Call the the uh, the hospital. Uh, call the doctor. Do you have a child? This is I'm coming. <laughs> yeah. So I ignored it because obviously I don't have no children. Yeah. Right? So then I think I don't know a couple of weeks or maybe a couple of months pass, and then get another text message just saying like, reminder, your son needs to come in. Da da da. Yeah. So then I'm like, hold up, like I don't have no son. <laughs> yeah. Right? But then I thought, <clears throat> instead of me ignoring it, let me let me check this. And, and in case I have some random yeah, yeah. son, and I <laughs> don't know so, some secret love child. Do you know what I mean? Coming to find yeah. out this kid's ten, and yeah. I, I don't know. I, let me call him up and find out who this kid is. Yeah. So I called him up, and then they made um, a mistake. Yeah. Apparently, it's meant to be for me, right? Yeah. Um. So the the thing is though, like. So it it was meant for you. It's meant for me, but not for my son. Oh. <laughs> so because I don't have no son, yeah. right? 
So then, so then the next thing is, I was like, oh, are you sure I can have this? Yeah. Right. So the reason for that is, if people don't know, is that I have ocular myasthenia gravis, which basically means my immune system is attacking itself. So I take immunosuppressants to dampen my immune system. Yeah. But what that means is that, like, obviously things like colds and flus I get more susceptible to. Yeah. But, like, I can't have live vaccines. Uh, MMR okay. is a live vaccine. Oh, wow. Told. Yeah, I didn't know that, actually. But... Learn everything. Learn something new every day. There you go. So just so people yeah. listening so they know what live vaccine is basically there's a bit of the actual the, disease, yeah, the, the, yeah the virus. disease yeah and and it, so you have to be injected with it so you technically they inject you with the virus for your body to to bump up the immune system there you go and to kill it so it's like oh we're gonna awaken this thing in you so you're you we see if your immune system can attack it and kill it there you go but if i go and weaken immune system there's yeah. nothing to go and kill off the virus yeah, right yeah. Um, but there's a bit of like complacency here because of like GP say, yeah, come in for this thing, but I'm not meant to be on them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, like, I guess, I guess warning to people, if you get called in for whatever, just make sure. Because yeah. they obviously haven't got their shit together from time to text me about your son needs to come in. <laughs> like, like I, I, I just said to them, you know what? I, I will check with my specialist and I'll call you back. You know, you know that's crazy. Uh, that's mad errors, but it's, it's. But at least you called and checked. You know what? That's the main thing. 100%. So, yeah, in terms of the bat stuff, I just think there are certain foods. There are certain animals. Um, you know, like well, you know, like magic mushrooms, right? Okay. You know, there's hundreds of different types of mushrooms. And we're told if you eat that mushroom, it's going to kill you. Mm. Don't eat it. Obviously, you're not going to eat it because you know the outcome is death. I, f- I find it this in the same region as bat. Why would you go eat something that you don't know? For me, because it does extracurricular activities, yeah, I don't know what you're doing in the... I, it's, not, it's not in a controlled farmed environment. It's not in a controlled environment. Therefore, it's, I know from just looking... But I even look at the animal and just like, this is not meant to be eaten. But so, I mean, for a lot of people, it's like in, in the Far East, like bat is like delicacy and i know there's regions of africa that i know that they eat bat but i'm not trying to join into that party i for, for me that's why i say like i've had my organs for 34 years and i pretty much know what we can digest and what we can't digest and i just keep it popular so with that whole <laughs> um, it's a bit just like it's actually you're crazy <laughs> that look everybody's <laughs> would you eat, would you have bat soup no, Hell no. Like, yeah, like, why would you eat bat soup it just doesn't You're, look appetizing to me like it just yeah it just doesn't if you see the picture of the bat like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah like at that point where you're like, something looking at like yo come on i'm not trying to eat that <laughs> like yeah sorry if you're listening to the podcast i'm actually making faces but um I, and that's how I just see things. And I, I you know, I, it may be an unpopular opinion, but I'm just saying that, you know, if something you don't know, it's extracurricular activities or, you know, you don't have an insight of, you know, it's a cave. You don't know wild guan in the cave and you're just going to put, pl- they're going to pluck this thing from the cave and then you just don't know. Yeah, so you just don't know. It's like, would we eat flies? So wait, wait, or just, like, just yeah. to counter that, right? Yeah. A bit of devil's advocate. Yeah, right? I, I know what you're going to say. Okay, go wait, on no, just say, say it for it. the people. Right? Go, go, go say it. Is that like, um, cool. So I tried to Google why you were speaking if there was bat farms. I couldn't find it. I saw yeah. something, but I have to go into it. I don't know, right? Yeah. So I don't know about extracurricular activities, right? <laughs> However, the things about like bats, it's not for me. Yeah. Right. But I can imagine for people, because I'm trying to think of like, um, like, 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 for for food that's not native to you. So so to someone else like cow foot, oxtail, um, all of that kind of stuff, they might be like, why would you eat that? Do you know what I mean? Like neck, why would you eat that? Do you know what I mean? Although it, you know these things are like tasty. Okay, but this is my thing: the cow's been in a controlled environment. The bat has just been jamming in the cave doing extracurricular what? What activities. It's, what but it's I that? get free but, range. Uh, <laughs> free range, then what? <laughs> it's been chilling wherever no, it was. No, no, no. But this is what I'm saying. But I'm sure there have been studies to say that bats carry diseases. 
You know what I mean? But I don't, but I may be just talking out of my ass here just to defend the fact, just to defend your point here. But look, like, cow, cows and chickens have been like, have like, like, what was it? it was, okay, you mentioned my cow disease. What yeah, was the chicken one? There was a big chicken one that went around. Salmonella. Bird flu. Bird flu. Yeah, there's, but there, there was bird flu. There has been some, you can get salmonella and all of that kind of stuff. But I, I, I but this is the thing, right? The reason why I'm trying to counteract your argument, I'm a Taurus here. I'm gonna fight to the end, even though I'm I may be wrong right now, but we're gonna fight to the end of this battle, right? <laughs> is the fact is these are known diseases to the world, right? Okay. These are very much known. Yeah. Therefore, there is a vaccine to counteract these things, right? Oh, the other, the, the salmonella and the... Yeah, when you get salmonella, they know what I'm going to do with the salmonella. You know, when you get mad cow's disease, I'm not sure they actually knew what to do with that one, so I'm not going to really vouch on that one. Because this one, I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But I'm just like, yo, I'm just defending myself here. This is like counter-argument from what I know. But what I'm saying is that these things are known. So even on the packets of like chicken, if you wash your chicken I don't know why people I, I mean personally I wash my chicken <laughs> I don't that's listen to that. That, that that's a whole new debate right there yeah. whoever trying to do oh it's cooked, cooked at 350 degrees so it's all gonna be it's gonna kill up now nah, me gonna wash it and put my put my lemon juice on it you know kill it kill it properly you know um but they know these things are written on on the packets but I'm what I'm trying to say is you're just going to the cave Grabbing the bat with no idea while going what the bat's been doing, fam. There's no, there's no, okay. Yes, that you are eating that at your own risk, but you do not know what can come out of that. Therefore, we've got, we've got viruses like the neurovirus, the coronavirus. And now they're saying that these things have come from the bat. So why are we still eating the bats, fam? Yeah, but I, look, not But the, the thing is that... And then what I'm going to say is this coronavirus, right? There is no, there's not an antibody yet for this vaccine because it was very unknown. And people are just doing these extracurricular activities, <laughs> eating these animals that are doing way more. They're doing too much and way more. And that's why I said that. There's some things that just aren't meant to be eaten, fam. They're, 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 you know, eat at your own risk, but look at the risk that you're taking upon your life when you're eating the bat soup, that looking like that in your plate. Like, so, yo, so, so let me, okay, cool, cool, cool. So I'm going to say two things here. Yeah. Number one is that, not necessarily for me, yeah. but I understand that, look, if that's your culture, I can understand some elder saying, look, I grew up on bat. I've been eating bat 50 years. I'm cool. I'm going to still eat bat. But the world is changing, babes. <laughs> look, I'm just saying. I <laughs> yeah, can imagine I can. That yeah, argument, yeah. Right? Not in the same yeah, sense yeah, yeah, for me, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. The second thing I want to put to you, right? You're on a desert island, right? For six months. Yeah. And all there is is a bat cave. Are you going to eat bat? You have no choice. I'm going to drink my own piss, mate. For six months? That's hypothetical. Yeah, no, this is a So where are we going to cook? When I eat, when I kill the bat, where are we going to eat it? Who said I'm going to even catch the bat? You know what? I, you know what? Go at ahead. this, No, no, no. At this point, I'm, I'm, a, I'm in God's hands, isn't it? So you're not going to eat the bats? I'm in God's hands. So wait, are you going to eat the bats or not? <laughs> listen, but don't... <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, but please. Like, I'm in God's hands. We'll see what God says. If God says... You, you have to pick one. Are you going to... You gonna either going to go and... I'm going I'm, I'm to I'm say my prayers and I'm going to wait till God's answer. If God literally drops a bat in front of me, that means I'm going to eat it. But like, So you will eat the bat <laughs> You know what? Shut up, listen. Fuck off. Ah! No, I'm not going to eat. You know what? <laughs> okay, so here's the funny thing is, you saying this to me, right? Okay. I was watching, there's a there's um, there's um this document. You know I love my Netflix documentaries, right? There's, sure. a, there's a documentary on Netflix. I can't, for the life of me, I can't remember what it's called. But it's basically about, oh, it's about um, athletes and superstars that have made comebacks. Mm-hmm. Or have gotten through a uh, um, gotten through like really hard or traumatic times, so I forgot it was re- It's a really good one. When I find it, I'm gonna send it to you because it's about bats. Okay. Right. There's this um, uh, there's this runner, but they do those like long distance. When mm-hmm. I say long distance running, it's not no long distance like we 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 do in London marathon thing. They run in the desert. Do you know what they're called? I've, they're like marathons in the desert. And they take like two, three days to complete. 
Okay, no, it's no. like a very extreme. They're like extreme because they run through different terrains. Mm. And um, this one basically, um, they were doing the run through. It was a marathon through uh, part of the Sahara Desert in Morocco, I think it was. So what happened on this? Like this man is very well known for doing these runs, mm. and he does really extreme runs. He's done them all across the world, like through snow, through all of this. And this one was through the desert at the heat, and it was the only one that he'd never completed because mm. it's really, really, really hard. Like he tried it like a bit. I think about like four or five times no mm. four times and this was going to be no five times and this was going to be his sixth time and he was he was determined to to um to do the race and his wife was just like i don't want you to do this race anymore because these things basically he's a thrill seeker mm. so people with that kind of mind frame of a thrill it, she even said it was very difficult being married to him because he wanted to do all of these extreme sports and I couldn't take it because he it, it was like he loved the sport more than he loved me and if I'm being honest when you are very passionate about something people are like they ask me Nastasha what do you love the most I love baking like I'm one of those people and I always say to like anybody um previous people who I've dated like I'm like when it comes to choose it, sometimes I, I I can easily choose a kitchen over a man. Yeah, we heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I've said, it to, I've said it to before, right? Yeah. I can easily do that because for me, it's like my extreme sport. Like, it's like, I'm so passionate about this. I would think like, oh, Natasha, you need to go home and get ready for this, like for this dinner. And it's like, oh, I've got a cake to do, dinner, cake man is going the cake like and it's really weird and so she was like it's very hard to be mad he was literally in a relationship he's in a relationship with his extreme sport and that's like me i'm mm. literally in a relationship with um with with cakes but i got what she was saying because i was like oh that's a bit like me i'm literally married to the kitchen so anyway he went ahead and he did this race and i think it was like on the second night, because it takes like days to complete. So they've got their backpacks with tents, water, and, and but they, they, there's, check, uh, there's checkpoint markers throughout the desert. So he's reached one checkpoint and he's sleeping. And so the next day he goes, he's running to the next checkpoint and he was doing it with a friend, but they, they have signals They'll leave stuff at check at the at each checkpoint to let each other know if they've reached or not, right? Because they run at different paces. So second night, what happens is a sandstorm happens, and some of the markers get covered um, the route that they're supposed to be running with the sand. So this guy's running, but he can't see any other runners around him. So it turns out that he literally goes off track. Mm -hmm. and he ends up into the open desert. Sahara Desert open, nothing, nothing. So it, he decides, so basically what happens when the sandstorm hits, he decides to stop and make camp. But, but by this time, he doesn't realize that he's run so far off the track, but due to the sandstorm covering all the markers, he doesn't realize that until morning. So he wakes up in the morning and he's just like, okay, let me start my run. So he's running and he's like, hold up he's been run at this point he's been running for he said probably about 45 minutes and he's not seen a marker so in his head he's like oh let me not panic because there was a sandstorm so they may be covered my guy keeps running for another half an hour no markers then he said he actually looks up and he realizes where the sun the direction that the sun is he's way off track if I'm, I'm not going to lie, this man was missing in the Sahara Desert for over two weeks. Spoiler alert for you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. I just full of spoil. He was missing in the Sahara <laughs> Desert for over two weeks. But during those two weeks, what he said was he drank his own wee and he weed on himself to keep himself warm because okay. the nights in the Sahara Desert are absolutely freezing. Mm. Temperature drops drastically. But he said um, when he was... He said there was a point where he, he lost so much weight. Like when they found him, he was like skeletal. And um, literally he said he was walking and he's not eaten and he's starting to hallucinate as well. So he's looking up in the sky and he can see these crows. And these crows are like 
<laughs> it's dinner time, baby. Mm. <laughs> Any minute now, you're going to fall over and it's dinner time. And so he, in his heart, is just like, okay, like, I'm actually going to be dinner for the crows in a minute. <laughs> like, but really, in the distance, he sees this building and he's like is that a building for real because by this time he's been this is probably like for like a week in yeah, like yeah, yeah. and he's like is that a building or am i hallucinating so he just decides to walk towards this building and these crows are circling because they're just like any minute now <laughs> nigga you're dead we're gonna munch on you we're gonna have a feast tonight baby we ain't going hungry in this sahara right because you're around so, <laughs> so <laughs> he's slowly walking to this hut and he actually reaches it and he realizes that it is a hut. So, well, it wasn't a hut, but it was like some stone kind of temple thing. He reaches it. I think he says he gets to the door and he sees um, the sign of a cross on it or he gets inside and there is a sign of a cross, meaning that it was kind of either somebody's grave or somebody's or a temple or something of the sort so he goes inside there and he just collapses inside there and he's just happy that he's not outside because the crows are mm -hmm. waiting for him but he can still hear the crows circling so he's just like collapses in there and he said what felt like he was asleep for like he probably said he fell asleep for what it felt like maybe two days but he was asleep for a very very long time so anyway then he wakes up from this conscious sleep that he's in and he hears flaps and it's like he's like shit there's bats and bats are kind of like similar to they're gonna mm. feast on you right oh, really? yeah apparently they can attack people they vampire do bats. vampire bats I don't know what kind of bat it is, but like okay. they can attack you as well, you know, they and in swarms of bats, like, you know. So he's like, Oh my gosh, there's a bat in here, but yo, I'm hungry too. And then <laughs> he basically said he had something in like a tool in his pocket, like, um, because they have all of these this stuff that they carry around. And he said he conjured up all of this his might and strength and literally killed the bat okay and he ate the bat and that's why he's huh raw yeah <laughs> i don't mean to laugh obviously if you're i think that... he ate it raw i don't know if he said he made a fire in there i can't remember if he said he made a fire because i'm like did he make a fire in there but where would he have got all the wood to make a fire i don't know but i know he ate the bat that's and some... he said he had to be a savage like that that's real. Um... And he said it was literally survival of the fittest. Anyway, another spoiler alert. They do find him in the desert. They find him after like two weeks. If it was two or three weeks, yeah. But the way they found him is like they actually passed that hut and they thought, nah, he could have never made it into that hut. But then it was somebody who said, nah, let's just check that little like little hut. I keep calling it a hut, but this little shrine and temple. And they found him in the shrine and temple. And I think he did say it was actually somebody's grave that oh, had yeah. died but they had literally buried this person out in the desert because he liked to travel on a camel in the desert or whatever but yeah it was interesting because when they found him they were just like nobody really well and truly you can't survive in the desert I, there, there's a number of days that you can survive out there mm. and after those days they were just like they were just looking for a body but he was just like and it was basically a mad testament and they said would you do the race again and he was like yeah i did it the next year <laughs> <laughs> that drill seeker in him yeah yeah that, yeah that's real passion that's yeah real. and then obviously the wife divorced him because that, that she was like this is not my portion in life i'm not saying because he was a thrill seeker but yeah. i'm sure there was other stuff sure yeah sure, but sure. like i just thought i'd tell that story about eating bats that's some real um bear grills Something. Yeah, it was a real bear gross, but it's a mad story though. I was like, I was even like, does this man survive? Like, oh. yeah, not for real. But yeah, that was yeah for me. Like, yeah, we're not gonna be consuming things that we don't know what the outcomes are. Really, fair enough. Um, let us know. Actually, hit us up in the comments, email us, and let us know the the strangest or oddest food that you've uh, ate Eaten. recently. Yeah, and if you would have bat soup. And if you've actually tried bat soup and bat soup is actually banging. Yeah, yeah, let us know. Like, yeah, like if, if you've actually eaten bat and you're just like, you're thinking like, why isn't Sasha going off? Bat is juicy, fam. Bat, you're missing out. 
Yeah, if it like you know, if it uh, is if better it, than wonton soup, and uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, he said if it's better than one. <laughs> I actually like wonton soup. I know, but I just like if it's better than wonton soup. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess moving swiftly on to uh, um, the next segment. Before I do, yeah, I do have something to let the people know. Juice and the sauce. <laughs> I thought you had done this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so yeah let's intro the the main meal um juice on the sauce is a show that chops up and serves you life topics narrated through the love of food and most importantly desserts charismatic random stories for a sweet entree followed by a meaty main course of discussions followed by recommend f- re- <sighs> followed by recommended flavors from the continent to round up this foodies delight of a podcast so you just heard uh, our starters for today. So it, was a, it was really big, but I think everything will make sense of our starters because um, mm. it links into the main. So our main's the main topic for this week. We um, funny after our show um, after after we did our show last week, me and Lasimba got into a conversation about. It was actually about something, uh, and do we call it an instant? Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. we can say or or yeah an incident that happened and it brought up the conversation about um business integrity yeah. and morale is it or morality that's what that that's what i was meant to say so business integrity and morality and um after this incident, we it, it brought up a we had a very very quite in depth conversation to the point where we were like yeah that's our topic for next week. Mm. And when I talk when I say business integrity and morality, it's either doing business with friends or just general business. And it was really centered around when um, when we make an error in business, mm. how we deal with it, mm. and um, the way um, the other party respond. Yeah. And when the other party are in the wrong and how they deal with it and Mm. what your integrity and morality is. And this is also centered around uh, cancel culture. Cancel culture, I think we touched on cancel culture in one of the previous um, um, podcasts that we've done. And when I say cancel culture in especially the food... um, the food industry it's more or less oh this i had the bad experience i had this experience with this caterer so i'm gonna cancel i'm never gonna use them again and um or i've had a bad experience with this company i'm never gonna use them again and i'm gonna make sure that nobody uses them and i'm gonna exploit what they did and blah 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 blah. Mm. um that kind of culture and that kind of culture is also seen in not just our food industry but it's also seen in other industries whether it's the media whether it's uh yeah media just daily life friends family whatever right Mm -hmm. and um for me there is i like uh, when me and the simba was talking about it i think as i've grown in business and i've had um i've also experienced situations where you know whether someone's saying they want to cancel me or somebody I'm saying, you know, I don't really cancel people in business, but or if I've had an experience and I'm like, I don't want to use that person again. What I've actually learned in business is I, I don't really practice a lot of cancel culture. I don't practice cancel culture because I believe that everybody makes mistakes and it's not about the actual incident anymore. It's how do we deal with it and resolve mm. it? It's the resolution that we come together to find. And there are some, um, there are some incidents like we experienced that the resolution was just from the other party was very kind of like, oh, because you didn't say that, that's it. Whereas I was just like, mm, see, I, you know, has my, has we your um, clients and we are saying that this is what. I'm trying to give a background on the story without being very, um, very intimate about it. But we, so let me just give a brief background because this is how the conversation came around. We um, outsourced somebody to do some work for us and then um, uh, we didn't, 
my error was not really going into the the final details. I just had an expectation that this is how when in because I've had because I've had previous experiences when I've gone out and sourced that exact um, that exact service. Yeah. Um, I've just been packaged with a certain uh, with all of the the tools or the items that I've needed without me really heavily mentioning it or them saying oh, yeah I, I've never really it, it, it's never really mentioned it's just like oh yeah the, this is a service you want I'm obviously going to package it in this format for you and um, the person didn't package it in that format but I took it upon myself and I said to when I um, me and Lucimba was discussing Lucimba said did you ask the person to do it like that and I said nah because I experienced I kind of expected it because that's how we roll. Mm. That's how that service is packaged. And then he was like, Lucimba said, well, well, that's the great area. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, in, in, in my head, I said, I do understand that's the great area, but because that service is packaged like that, shouldn't it just come like that anyway? And the simple was like, yeah, but that is the great area because we we didn't mention it. And I was like, yeah, fair enough. I'll, I'll take that L and I ride with it. And so we went back to the company and we said, oh, I, I said, I explained and I said, okay. I didn't actually say, <laughs> I actually just asked them how much it would be. If it came with, if, it, if what they'd given us already came, with um, that service level or that service package. If not, how much would it be to add on top? And we just got a straight line. We didn't, we, we got an excuse back. And then Lucimba was, Lucimba said, I'm never going to use that person. Or I'm never going to, not the person, they're not going to, he was like, I would never use that company again. Done. They're done for me. And I was like, no, but listen, but we just don't cancel people. We have open com conversations because there is still a chance that this per this company can rectify it. And it was like, no, 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 no. We, we, you know, it's not about that anymore. It's like they've not shown any integrity towards towards what we've asked them. So why should I go back and use them? And then I was still fighting. I still have the kind of like, let's see if we can just ask instead. Let's not bother in terms of like um now that let's not let's not ruffle around the edges let's just ask them if they can still do if they can do this on top of what we've already of um uh what we've showed them and just ask them for a price and they were like flatline they they gave us the same excuse and now they gave us a line even though we were willing to pay more mm -hmm. and willing to wait mm -hmm. And they gave us a flat line. And that's where the conversation of morale and integrity came from. So Lucimba was asking me, Lucimba asked me, uh, what did he ask? Oh, I forgot what, what I must, but it basically came back to the question of, would I have handled it? Like, how would I have handled that situation, me being that company? And um, if I, I just relate it back to how I relate incidents or mistakes or something that I didn't I didn't do for one of my clients and I'm just like listen but this is how I deal with it if I understand that we were, both parties were in the wrong or there was a miscommunication that happened I because I want to retain custom I will go above and beyond and deal with it in a more with with integrity as in I will offer the customer what I will offer the customer what they're asking for and probably not charge them just out of um care and out of due due diligence because for me I'm I want to retain a customer and um the way I did and if they're not being especially if we're not being aggressive about it and that was the main thing we wasn't even being aggressive about it we were just being like very light-hearted like oh it may it was our mistake um but that kind of flat line and you know response for me was kind of just like I get why you listen but would say like yeah I don't want to use them again and it kind of made me feel like mm, I don't really want to use them again because like if this is a kind of response that we're going to get from this what more if it was like when we're doing when we're placing huge orders you know what i mean so 
yeah, I, and the way I handle miscommunication and stuff with my customers is, you know, I want to retain customer and we don't get everything right. And sometimes when we get something wrong, we think it's the end of the world. But it's really, for me, I've always said, it's how you deal with the situation and how you resolve it. There are some customers that I'm not going to lie that come with wild statements and you kind of have to, without stepping on too many toes, kind of got to shut them down. And I'm not lying, there's some people, some incidents um, that I've, scenarios that I've come across and I've had to just put it really, really point blunt, blunt and say, Okay, this is where you went wrong, you know, and you can't come back to me after like so such a long period um, to to kind of just like re re reclaim something in that sense or want to say this and X Y and Z. Um, so I'm always about how can I m- rectify the situation without causing without causing more damage? How can we? minimal damage control, but still present great customer service to retain the customer. Um, that was a lot of talking. <laughs> Quite a bit. Um, I'm so cool. Look, what, what you just said, right? Like makes perfect sense to me. I'm just going to just add just a slight layer yeah. just to summarize for the people because I know that we're speaking in a little bit of riddles. Yeah, I know. It sounds very all riddly like, well, and, um, and someone yeah. did. Uh, yeah. So I'm just going to summarize real briefly. Um, me and Nastasha ordered a product uh, expecting a certain deliverable. Um, the deliverable, uh, call it what it is, fell short of our expectation. Uh, expectation based on, I guess, what would, should be seen as industry standard. Uh, and then obviously when we confronted the party about uh, presenting us with the industry standard, um, you know, there was an objective, uh, not an objection, um, where it was said that, you know, they can't deliver um, that. And although it's our fault and yeah. that, 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 that request perhaps wasn't made up front, um, that's when the whole idea of obviously like morality and ethics came up because of like in business, it's like, okay, how far will you go to, you know, please your customer and help? Yeah, yourself? it's not even, I wouldn't even say that we were looking to be pleased because we were actually willing to pay for the additional service. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we knew like it was our error. You know, yeah. we took part blame for it. Yeah, not 100%. But and for me, I didn't look at it as like, oh, this is a loss. And I was just like, oh, it's a lesson because you need to be really, really clear on what you're actually... You, I have to remind myself is it's not one, two, two like lines. It's like a full brief description, which obviously... So there's that. Okay, cool. So the way I see it, right, is that like... It's just two By sus- the same time, it's industry, it's, it's industry standard. So it, that was the thing for me. It was just like, well, in the back of my mind, it was like, but this is industry standard. So the thing about that, right, is that like, okay, cool. Yeah, there's there's the by the book, like, you know, things would be like, we should have done the brief. Cool. Yeah. Like, yeah, we may shouldn't have expected what, you know, the industry delivers for said uh, deliverable anyway. Cool. You get that. But then, you know, there's there's certain scenarios where like, if you're thinking about, because look, like truth be told, like this said service, like I wanted to use uh, this service again. I, I knew some other people that perhaps wanted to use the service, but you know, based on such an experience, like I would never recommend that person, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, to, 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 to uh, maybe expand and give the, the audi- audience or listeners a bit more, more meat to, to chew on. I'll tell them my tale, right? Um, so I had a situation where I hired a caterer. Okay. And basically, uh, I hired a caterer, and then the number of guests that went to were meant to turn up to, uh, for the said event, uh, I think, ended up being in the region of about half. Uh, but the said event was a ticketed event, so it meant that um, I paid for more people that actually turned up. Yeah. All right. So by the end of the event, like, like it's still a blast. Like the yeah. people that did come, they had a good, you know a good time or whatever like that. But by the I remember you actually did invite me to that event. I couldn't come. Okay, cool. I remember that. Like <laughs> you asked me before, and I was like, no, you actually did. I remember. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So basically, by the end of the event, 
in my head, I'm thinking like, okay, I don't have to meal prep for the week. I yeah. got lunch, I got dinner for the whole week because of like, I've got like X amount of people didn't turn up. Yeah. Right. However, um, at the end of the event, I got, actually got, I think like, you know, those small containers, like, yeah. like um, what do you call those the plastic things that with the clips on it? Like, just a a small it, container. Yeah. 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 Clip uh, it container. Yeah. I got a tiny one of those with some food in it and stuff like that. And the symbol's like, so where's the rest of the meal? So, so okay, here's the thing. The meals, not meal, meals. So, so here's the thing, right? So in our conversation, um, I t- okay, I'll tell you what I did. And I'll speak about mine and Nastasha's conversation. So my co- course of action um, was to, in my head, decide that uh, for this particular person, for like the future projects that I'm planning and all the things like that, I would never work with that person. I would never recommend them to anybody. Um, you know, so there's, how do I put this? There's, there's a, I, I guess a reason why I haven't, I guess, stuck to that exactly. But to be honest, like moving forward, like in future, 100%, I would never recommend that person, work with that person, mm. like in any capacity. Only because of that, that, decision that they made consciously to like hey i've got away with this i've got all these raw ingredients that i can either take home or use for Mm. another client i would say that that part of it was kind of not kind of that was like (coughs) that person was moving recklessly and dutty so with that um because like in me and Natasha's conversation like Natasha said that uh, you know uh she may have confronted the person i would have so like my not in a not in a not in a wild way like <laughs> like recklessly like I am on this podcast but in a very um in a business manner cool conducted myself in a business but firm manner as well so with that like so my whole thing is that like I agree with that I I I like I said I was saying yeah. um that I agree with that approach. I, I understand that if you have an in transaction with an individual and they don't give you what you expect mm-hmm. or, or meet your, 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 yeah, meet your expectation, any capacity, like some conversation needs to be had, mm. right? Um, my opinion also, and I guess the decision that I took, and I, I generally take, what I'd like to do with, with, with people, I like to give you enough rope to hang yourself and then see what you do with it. Right. Yeah, I get that too. Because I, I mean, I, I, I navigate with both of those too. So, and that's what I guess I, I did in this situation. Because, like my, my, like my, 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 my dreams and my ambitions and things that I want to do, like, are so, like, th- th- they're huge. You yeah, know what I mean, like, th- like this is like the the, uh, I wouldn't say the first foray, but one of many forays uh, mm. of things uh, that's going to be coming up. Like even before the show started, we yeah. Sasha were cooking up some stuff for the future oh my gosh yeah like even before t- um we got on today like i think we spent like two hours two hours speaking. just like talking about the future of our podcast and the many avenues that we want to enter with um and well explore not even explore do with it and how much room we have to create something really really spectacular and you know streams for not just together but has individuals as well so with that like um i guess with my my, my other brand um the black food club Mm. you know bringing people together around african and caribbean food for me like with all of this trying to connect people and you know see what i can do to support the industry it makes no sense to me to try and hoodwink me yeah you know because of one like i know what's going on uh, and number two, like you're not doing yourself any favors long term. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, like anybody that asks me, oh, you know, what's your said experience? Uh, I will tell them my experience. You know, mm. but with that said, like slightly different from council culture. So in my head, this person's counselled. Yeah. Slightly different. Like I'm not going out of my way to hey Twitter. Yeah. This is what happened to me. Or yeah. hey YouTube. This is what happened to me by this said person. Like even in this video. You know, yeah. I'm not putting this person on blast. I'm not saying, you know. I don't even like putting people on blast because <laughs> it's just not my way. I talk about funny stories. Uh, in saying that, like, people are like, yeah, but you just spent the whole hour putting your family on blast. But I'm not even putting them on blast because that is, like, that's experience that I want to tell people about and what it's like to 
my experience of working with my family. I talk about it because it's all fun. Like, it's not all fun. I, I spoke about it because it's not all fun and games, but there are gems out there, gems in there mm. for also someone considering on how to work with their family. So, okay, yeah. cool. The, the, my whole thing about... P- okay, this is a bit of a yeah. tangent, but I'll bring it back. My whole thing about pitting people on blast, and perhaps why I don't do it as much, is that people are quick to like oh my training's late hey tfl you need to sort it out put it all over twitter yeah, yeah, yeah. right but how many times are that person gonna jump on twitter and be like hey tfl like oh um the trains were early today or the chain ran yeah. on time like thank you yeah do you know what i mean oh hey restaurant the food that the, today was exceptional right on twitter like yeah how many times they, but they're quick when there's something wrong to jump on and just but shout that about scope it. scope of, um, we highlight the negative so much mm. and people kind of drink from, it, it's like we, we feed from that negativity and negativity, like one thing can blow up so so much. But it, it, it's mad because I see that as well. Like when, when we're doing good, there's not many people. 100%. And it, there's, the cheerleaders are very far and few, but when something bad happens, oh, it's just kind of like, the ratios is crazy but yeah so like um one thing that i have done in the past and look this is not not for everybody i've, I've been in you know scenarios where let's say there's a, a, a transaction uh, or not a transaction let's say there's like people are coming together to put together some kind of deal or something like that mm. right and let's say something goes wrong like unforeseen circumstances whatever yeah. or, you know things change and and let's say for whatever reason I want to exit or you know things are just not going to plan and you make promises you can't deliver Mm. I've had scenarios where even though it's not my job to right to pay off I guess all parties for like said investment whatever or just like leave myself in a scenario where I'm short yeah that's financially uh, my time uh or what have you yeah and yeah that that is not for most people but a like you know it's good for my i understand it though yeah (laughs) because it's just like let's just be done with it and that's i can everybody can start their new chapters exactly so a is is buying the problem um i can have a a clear conscience and i also think it's good for my, my 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 personal brand and you know the the name I prefer over personal brand. It's just reputation. Yeah. Right. There's a dude I can never remember who this was. I don't know if it was Jack Ma or who it was. I don't know where I heard it. Mm. I think someone in China or something like that. Um, whenever he does business deals, right, he always gives away like fifty one percent, and he takes forty nine percent. Yeah. Right? And the interview or wherever I was listening to this, they asked him like, "Why do you do that?" Right. Yeah. Because obviously he doesn't have a controlling stake. Yeah. And the whole idea was that you know because he gives away most of the company, most of the equity and the money, etc. you know, therefore everybody wants to work with him. Yeah. So even if I have a negative experience with someone, right, for whatever the transaction was mm. or whatever, the fact that you over deliver in compensation, yeah, that means there's an opportunity to work with that person again. And I think that's something that, you know, Katie see, can I, I was, I'd see that different. I'm just like, if you're acting like this in this situation and you want to work with me again, um, that's how, I, but that's kind of like my, like, <laughs> like kind of, yeah, that's my kind of thought. On so it. But could, I have loads of kind, it, it, I, I honestly, for me, it always depends on what the, the, the service was and the whole scenario, the big, the the scenario was but yeah continue so my thoughts on what you just said right is i believe in like the 80 20 rule right um anybody can pick up that book by perry marshall 100 percent recommend it really really good book right but basically like and you i don't know you might be able to relate to this as well well do you find that perhaps like most of your money right Mm. comes from 20 percent of your customers yes there you go the same also works in reverse and what i mean by that is 80% 80% of your problems yeah. will come from uh, the 20%, not the 20%. <laughs> so you have few customers that just seem to be more meticulous, more is it pedantic, yeah. just more OTT than everybody else. Yeah. And you've got another customer that's not uh, asking no questions, chill, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and they're giving you the same money. Yeah. Yeah? And in that scenario, uh, something I learn about is you have to be prepared or 
happy to fire your clients. It's not yeah. a nice thing. Yeah, yeah. But there's ways to do it. I think it's also like amicably. Like, say yeah, I no, I, I, I get that because there's some people that you just like, we can't work together. That's it. Yeah. So with that kind of person, with the scenarios talking about earlier about open con- over conversation yeah. I might still do it not necessarily that the fact that I'm planning to work with them again or using yeah. the opportunity if that person speaks to anybody else hopefully they don't necessarily have a bad word to say against me and to affect my, my reputation I, I delivered I, I, like, listen but I agree a hundred percent with what you're saying mm. um, yeah continue. and then the, the, the only other side of that as well is that sometimes that person because I, I look at things like in in because again older now right you yeah. know you know when you're like 20 you're like 30 was old yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah now i start to think of things that like a five ten years block blocks right yeah. this person that i you know overcompensated or, or delivered mm. on who knows five ten years you know who could have look me and the Sasha's relationship stemmed from a podcast we did what three two years ago something like that 2016 oh wow look at your memory That's you know it. why i remember because okay. 2016 <laughs> a lot of things happened mm-hmm. like in terms of business growth 2016 was quite it was a very pivotal year for me in terms of business something that i've actually noticed within because i was listening i love like I, I talk about oprah's super soul <laughs> sessions podcast just i'm gonna digress a little bit from this um what i've noticed i was listening to one podcast i can't remember who it was because i'm still in 2018 at the moment I, i've listened to the podcast from the very first one up until trying to get to <laughs> the current ones um it was they they were just like you have to um life in, in life you get signs of what happens in your um in your cycle have i explained that right so basically in your life things happen in cycles Mm -hmm. but it's up to you to open your eyes and recognize the cycles Mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah no 100 percent. so from him saying that i was like let me I, I took time and just was like started reflecting on my <laughs> on my life. Um, and I realized that I have a three year cycle. OK, so every three years, something drastic happens in my life. In 2016, I, 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 I left my job, decided to do this full t- cake full time. 2019, I leave like that's three year cycle, right? So 2019, everything that I did in 2016 takes an overhaul and turn and change. Mm-hmm. So things happen for me in a three year cycle. And then if I think about what happened in 2000, okay, 2013, that was a time that I actually was started to, that was the, the time that I left, 2012 I left Diesel, but that was another three year cycle of, um, I, I getting fired from the job that I left. I left Diesel to go into this new company and then I got fired and that what made me boost into saying that I actually want to physically bake mm-hmm. for a living, but I want to get a part-time job. So I have three-year cycles. And then moving forward back from that in 2000, 2010, is it? Yeah, 2010 was... Um, I was, that's when I was trying to figure out my life. And figuring out my life was me being in diesel. And that's when I started actually baking. That's when baking became a thing in 2010. So I have a three year cycle. Sorry, and I just digress. <laughs> but I just wanted to add that gem in there. Like, I, yeah, I like, yeah, so I have a three year cycle. Okay. So I want you to also figure out your cycle. Not now, but like, take time because it takes time because sure, you have sure, to sure. backtrack and you have to pick up on the on the thing so every three years there's a there's a there's a drastic change that happens and that actually connects with a lot of things in my life there's a that there's a re- that that is actually a really big thing like that number is actually very special to me in my life that's why i understand why 
it makes sense now a lot of things i'm just i honestly this sounds like a waffle for me <laughs> like it's mad waffle but i'm having like a life epiphany whilst doing this podcast but anyway let's get back to it so yeah we digressed a little bit um i started talking about life cycles i think that was because somebody needed to hear that i don't know who needed to hear that but you know take that gem and roll with it find sure. your life cycle so what i was saying um just to go back just speaking about like reputation my whole thing is about like cool yeah you 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 may pay some money to someone and you know that's a loss to Mm -hmm. you in order to like repair your reputation or to 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 put you in good stead with people uh it's not something for everybody uh i understand like the benefits of like confronting somebody like at that point in time regarding what whatever said incident but you know i just believe in like not wanting to, to to micromanage not wanting to to have to police your your relationships like like they talk about like birds of a feather or you know like-minded people hang around with each other mm. it's just like i i just want to be in environments where like the people who i'm around like if we're all working on a project i don't necessarily need to be there like y- you can have this task i have this task but i know you know said person would you know behave just on a human level with people in a way that i would as well so i believe in what you're saying and i understand that whole sometimes you just gotta pay off everybody in a situation and just move on but my kind of thing is is sometimes when we do that it just becomes you can just see it as it's a loss like i'm losing money just to kind of do that i believe in turning um losses into lessons and sometimes i feel like when we just pay off the person they don't actually learn their lesson or take the lesson out of this. And I'm, I am I get that sometimes what that kind of pain off people is my very last resort. Mm-hmm. You know, just be like, okay, we've gone through this stage. We've gone through that stage. And the stages that I mean is like, I, um, I've learned that um, for me to better myself in business, I need to learn how to confront people when things go wrong. Because what comes out of, going wrong is a lesson in how to spot that red flag in the next time moving forward in business if a, if that situation will arise again you will know how to handle it because sometimes i believe that when we just say okay this is happening and this person's fighting or let me just give people their money we kind of just give in to the fact that that per- we're going to pay that person off to um, get rid of the problem because for us that's the that's the solution instead of actually challenging the problem to find um to to get the lesson out of the problem because sometimes what can happen um is that these we have this small you know we can have this time where okay i'll pay you off because that's the way i deal with it do, do um blah done we're in good stead then you meet somebody else completely different and another situation arises and you're just like oh to end this problem i'm just gonna pay this person off not gonna confront it like oh i come i feel like i've confronted it enough i'll pay you off boom we're still in good business but i think when you do that it's a trap it becomes um just it it becomes a it, it uh what's the word man i'm so frazzled like words are escaping me um Mindful not a mind filled it becomes a routine check it's like okay i i don't want to confront it so therefore i'll just pay it and i don't believe um i think i used to do that a lot like i can't be asked to confront it i'm just going to pay you and move on because i still want to keep you i i I still want to do business with you and it's better for all of us but really what we're not doing is actually challenging the actual problem and learning from the problem therefore both parties get the full experience of okay the next time this comes across it's not going to happen i do understand that there are some situations that it's not even a talking matter i just pay you off and move on Mm -hmm. and when i pay someone and move on that just means i'm not dealing with you the next time because I've had that experience and you're not listening to say that I'm meeting you halfway and I also want to expose your errors so we can both take a lesson and learn from it. And um, for the example that Lysimba had, had, or the example or the experience Lysimba had with the caterer, my response to it was, I would have challenged him, Lysimba. I would have said, well, 
what you're saying is I've had, um, for example, I paid for 14 people, seven or eight people have arrived, including myself. Therefore, I have, my maths is really bad now, six, <laughs> I have six spare dishes. So where is the six spare dishes? If he says, oh, um, well, those six people didn't turn up, I would say, okay, but I've paid for those six plates. So I still should have six plates, whether it's cooked or not cooked, I would like the food. If he says, well, technically um, they didn't turn up, so I still retain the food. I'd be like, no, no, no. If they turned up, you still would have had to hand over the food. So I need the food or I'm going to only pay you for the number of people that have turned up for now. And I would have wanted to hear what his response is because technically you have ownership over that food, regardless whether people turned up or not, there should be six plates left over. If there is someone who works, if you're in the catering business and um, you're listening and you're feeling you, you disagree with what I'm saying, please feel free to let me know. And I would like to know why, because this is a learning experience. But in my eyes, I would have challenged him and said, well, no, fam, <laughs> this is how we're gonna roll. We either, this are, these are your two options. You're either gonna give me the food that's raw so I can take it home and be packaged and package it, or I'm gonna deduct the six out of what, you know, of what I owe you. Has I paid you a deposit, so I'm only paying you for six, end of. Because nobody really, you don't hire a caterer to do, to, to you hire, if you're having a party, and you're having a party for a hundred people and only 70 people come um, turn up, I have 30, 30 plates access. So I expect to see the 30 plates access. I expect you with your morale and integrity as a chef to come to me and say, I know you less than um, the number of people that you expected didn't turn up. You've got, therefore there is all of this excess food. What would you like us to do with it? that's somebody with integrity. That's somebody, not even integrity, that's what you do. So if you had, if he had done that and said, well, listen, but, uh, you know, you've got all of this food, what would you like to do with it? And you said to him, okay, you can just take it, take it home with you, or you can use it for your next event. Fair enough. But that's what I feel should have happened. And that's how I deal with things that come my way or, situations like that because it's a lesson for us to both learn that okay the next time if i do hire a caterer i know how to deal with this if there's excess food or that's something i can draw up in the contract saying if there is excess food if my number of guests do not turn up then um i am i am able to take the excess food home so they know that it's written bottom line. do you do you see what i'm saying does that make sense so <clears throat> sorry um Everything that sorry, my belly's from I know. <laughs> no, know. mine as well. You know, like I'm not even gonna lie. I'm just like, yes, I, I think it's mad dinner time. Yeah, hundred percent. I don't know if you heard that in the mic, but if you did, yeah, that was my stomach. Yeah. Um, but look, look, um, I, 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 I don't dispute anything you're saying. Yeah, you know, I think it's a, a valid approach uh, to confront to confront uh, anybody in that kind of situation. Uh, I chose, you know, just in, in that moment not to take that approach. But look, I think both are valid, personally. Yeah. You know, one, one thing um, I was just thinking about, and you kind of touched on it just now when you, you mentioned the word contract. Um, yeah. It stems from what we were speaking about earlier. What has helped me navigate through life, right, is mm. everything is my fault. And I believe that, right. Yeah, I get that. I, I, you know what? I, I have that business mind as well, and I have that business mind because I want I'm I, the way I approach business is I I want to fail more to I know I know nothing. I um I know everything, but I really know nothing. Sorry. So when you have that approach, yeah, I want to fail to understand because when you know better, an Oprah quote, <laughs> when you know better. You do better. That actually came from Maya Angelou, actually. But she says it all the time. Like, when I know better, I'll do better. 100%. The, the more losses you have is basically, you know, the, the more you, you, you try, you taste, you, you do, mm. the, more, the more you realise how not to navigate. Yeah. You know? 
And uh, the, the reason why I say, you know, I believe things are my fault. I believe that just not just with business, mm. like in, in personal life. Uh, you know, I family. don't believe that in personal life. I'm okay. just like, y'all let out. <laughs> no, <joking. laughs> um, so I, the reason why I put it in my personal life, right, yeah. it allows me not to play the victim. It allows me to take mm. control, even of situations where I completely understand. That's actually it's quite clever, of, actually. Yeah. I, well, I don't know. If it's Some clever, mental just... arithmetic symbols <laughs> play with people out here. But it allows me to take control of situations, where even when I know it's not, uh, yeah. in my control yeah for yeah. example like you, you go to work you're you're late but it's not really your fault like the train terminated or the train mm. was late da, 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 da. i will look at it as you know it's my fault i should have left earlier do you know what i mean i should have you know checked the travel time yeah. before i got just it allows me just to take control you know um so in this scenario for example like the way i would apply it is like um oh the food that I expected didn't meet my expectations, mm. right? Although I didn't confront uh, this individual about it, the way I'm looking at it as my fault is that I didn't, I wasn't upfront about my expectations post event, you know? Yeah. Similar to what you touched on about contract, similar to like your first example when we were speaking about laying down the guidelines of like yeah. this is what i expect from yeah. deliverables but sometimes like even when you're speaking about experience having done some other uh kinds of events uh as well and speaking of funny about speaking mm. about going wrong as well it gives you a blueprint of what to not to ask for yeah. what i mean is that it's almost like you have to go through these negative things and fail to realise, oh, you know what, next time, um, I need to ask, for, okay, cool, to give you an example, right, I do websites, oh, well, I yeah. say, well, I can make websites, yeah, right? but I hate making them for people, I hate doing client work, right, yeah, and one of the mistakes that I made that I didn't, didn't um, learn until very late on is that managing clients and my expectations by saying how many revisions you might have, yes. how many um, um, how many types of deliverables yeah. have you received? Because what used to happen is like, okay, um, I'm sure you experienced this in cake. I'm going to give you yes. a yes, because I, I was example. about to touch on an experience about that. Yeah. So classic example is, um, what do you want? What kind of website you want? I don't know. <laughs> then it's like, okay, do you want? red website do you want a blue one do you mm. want a green one oh, i don't know you you just make it look nice yeah all right cool come back with you know green pink and purples like oh which yeah. one of those right oh, you know what go for the purple one you make the purple one it's like okay just tweak this and then we're done you come back you know i kind of like that pink one but now i want it to look like this yeah I want polka dots here and you know i want this to move and i want that to spin and da 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 and it's like, okay, go away. And I was like, oh, what the... But my problem was, and the reason why I go back to everything's my fault, is I didn't lay up, okay, I'll make the site, here are revisions, you want yeah. extra revisions, they're going to cost you, bam, bam, bam. Yeah. Right? And just bringing it back to what was speaking about with, like, the the the, uh, the caterer, mm. like, it's my fault. I should have had a contract which said, these are the deliverables. Mm. If you fail to meet these deliverables, there's, you know, potential mm. this penalty or I pay less, or you owe this, yeah. or this is the food I expect. You know, what happens in that contract if there's not enough people for uh, the amount of people that I pay? Mm. So a refund, all of these kind of things should be in the contract. So that's why it's my fault, and I can only put it as me being, being naive. It's like it's like the law, right? Yeah. And what I'm saying is like, when they say with the law, um, being naive is never an excuse. Yeah. You go to another country and you're, you're smoking in the wrong place or you're wearing the wrong attire and you break the law. Mm. The fact that you say, oh, hey, I didn't know, they don't, they're not interested. Yeah, you that's... have to go and just make sure, yeah, your research, your paperwork, whatever it is, is tight. Mm. I, I mean, I get that and I agree with that, but I will always say the other person also needs to learn that. It has to be, you know, like... I'm telling you because I'm I'm flagging it up because I want to resolve it, and mm. I'm one of those people who I like to I, I like amicable I like to resolve things amicably. I'm not one of the, I, I as much as I probably sometimes run off into the deep end. My thing is like when we've got 
uh, when we've got a situation, I like to resolve it amicably. But I have realized in my older years that not everybody's like me. Nobody thinks like me in being amicable. Sometimes you just do have to pay off the person because you're getting them out, of, getting them out of your hair, or just to be like quieting down. But like I said, when I get to those stages of just saying, "Okay, here's your stuff," like that's I wouldn't say I don't do a cancel culture. I just say, you know what? Let me give that 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 <laughs> that relationship time, and I'm just gonna be like you know quite if the person pops up again i'll probably you know give them a one two word or just like you know send them a little email saying i enjoyed your service but if necessary if needs be if that makes sense but there are times that i do understand that there are going to be times in business that it's not even i don't even (laughs) i don't want the lesson today here it is we're going to be cool we're going to be civil and keep it moving And there are times where I've learned that I do have to pipe up my voice and go, okay, even if I've made the mistake, I want to be like, okay, like, how do we rectify? Do I have to pay more to rectify it? Do I have to, what do I have to do to rectify this? So I'm aware the next time. And I would say um, one thing, Mm -hmm. um, one gem to actually take away from this, not just in business, have contracts in life. When I say have, have contracts in life, like, You could be doing a small exchange with your friend. Draw up a contract for it. Because sometimes we're not always... The other party doesn't always think like you. And sometimes the other party isn't going to return the favour or do give you... do Do you right by returning in time. Have contracts in life. And I think that has been one of my biggest life lessons. Regardless whether you're my friend, my family, um, work colleague, contracts are, especially on big things in your life, big or small actually, big or small, have contracts. It's just like, you know, um, even if we're family and you're, you know, someone is, you're you're living at, you know, your auntie has a spare house and you're living at, she'll probably give you a contract for it because she don't, sometimes we become, (laughs) you never know what could happen, you know what I mean? You know, you, 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 you never know what would and uh, what would happen. But I've really experienced that in the past couple of years where I, I never used to believe and not that I didn't believe it, I kind of fell short on that when people would be like contracts, 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 contracts. And even the smallest thing, it could be like, you know, if you do not return like I don't want a penny more, a penny less, if you don't return it on this day, these this is the these are the steps that I'll take. Mm-hmm. You know, all of those things are just so important. Like get into the habit of writing a contract. You know, regardless whether it's for a friend, even if you're doing a, a like even if I'm doing a, a a cake for my friend, and this is why I'm so big on um, friends and family when they order cakes from me, they order it through the right stream, right channel, right stream. You're not going to WhatsApp me your order. You're not going to, you're not going to text message me your order. You're not going to, yes, you can call me and make an order, but what they're not going to do is send it via WhatsApp or send it, via text message or even call me on my personal line they got to call a business line and i make those i make it that strict because i'm doing business with you and if something goes wrong i don't want you to hear but i told you on the phone or i wrote in the text message that's not how i like orders don't come through that because it's such a detailed way Mm -hmm. so to ensure that your order goes according to plan and I send you my terms and conditions of the order, mm-hmm. you know, there's no coming back to me and say, but Nastasha, I'm your, I'm your cousin. I, you're a customer. You ain't no cousin of mine right now. You're a customer. All right. And as a customer, this is how it goes. You, there's no special treatment. Everybody gets treated. And there is, I, I really want to shout out to like my family and my friends who actually really order through the right channels. Because it's taken a while, but they get it now. And I really appreciate that. Um, <laughs> sorry, it just made me, made me giggle. Um, I know it sounds extreme, that, oh, but it's your... Fr- but honestly, like, it, helps ma- help, it helps you manage yourself better. 
Look, you know, it, and this is what I've always said. Sorry to yeah. to cut you. Um, when I got my because I remember before I had a business line, mm. I used to just have one phone, my my personal line, and use that as a business. It really became. <laughs> It was hard to juggle, and I'll tell you why it's hard to juggle, is when you have customers calling you on your phone, and it's just a random number, and these times I'm probably out with my friends, and I'm just like, oh, hi, and they're just like, hi, can I order a cake? And you're like, oh, okay, and it just made it, it makes it that much professional that when I have my business line, there's an opening line, so people know it's not kind of just like, oh, like it's a random I'm talking to a random person mm. or even if I'm not available my mum has a phone or my sister somebody in my team has the phone you know and they know that's a business and I know like okay it's after seven I don't answer phone calls on my business line after seven o'clock I just watch the phone ring and I'll call you back tomorrow it sounds really bad but I have to adopt these rules because after seven o'clock that's my time you know just that's my double room. after seven Huh? No, the only time I answer my phone after like seven o'clock is if I'm on my way to deliver a cake to a client or I'm working with that client that evening. But if it's just in a general weekday, working weekday, like, do you get paid overtime for for where you're working if you stay extra? No. There you go. So why am I going over my time? You call back in. You call back in working. In, in work time, in the working hours. <laughs> uh, it sounds kind of just like, man. And people, obviously, one thing um, my friend said to me is like, remember with a mobile number, people become comfortable and think that they can call you anytime. But these in this day and age, there are loads of companies with mobile numbers. But if it says on my website that I'm open from nine till seven, if you're calling at 8.30, I'm looking, 8.30 in the morning, I'm looking at my phone because I'm not open yet. And I'm so I've become so strict on it. I you and yeah. I, I never used to be. I'd be like, oh, I'd feel like, oh, but I want a customer and they really want my service. Yes, but if they really want it, they have to wait. And you know, you won't go to you won't go to a shop after it's closed and demand they open the doors because you're there, right? Um. So you <laughs> so after. Okay, a shop says it opens from eight till eight. You turn up at quarter past eight, and the shop it, and but you can still see workers in there. You're gonna demand that they open the door. All right, cool. So, um, <laughs> I want to say something. Then I'll add to 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 yeah. to to what you're just saying. Right. The thing I want to say before I, I forget it. Yeah. Right, is that I just want to build on or 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 co-sign what you're saying about contracts. Only yeah. Because of, I've lost a lot of money. A yeah. lot of money from doing business with friends, uh, and there's no paperwork involved, and yeah, like I can't call and send money because of there's no paperwork. So yeah, that, like I I believe in that. Um, to what you're saying, right? Look, I I also the thing before I forget it as well. I think contracts are good not just for you to protect you. They're good for your your customer in order to. Not just look professional, but it, it protects them because you're both set at the expectation level, mm-hmm. and that means that no one's going to be disappointed, or they shouldn't be yeah. disappointed because everybody's set up what we're going to achieve, how we're going to do it, and uh, yeah, and then they, everybody should be happy. Now, to come back to what you were saying for your, your question, right? Um, I believe it's a type of product, right? Yeah, cool. If Primark's closing the doors, right. Uh, and if I'm working in promo and someone's knocking on the door, I'm like, it's home time. Yeah. Like, you have to wait till tomorrow, right? Yeah. However, if it's like a very bespoke product, I might be open to being more flexible based on the price tag, right? Yeah. So if the price tag, you know, we're approaching a few thousand, you know what I mean? Like, if, like, like let's say like it's Rolls Royce or, 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 or Porsche, right? They're closing at eight, right? And I see someone leaving the office. I knock on the window at five past eight as the dude's walking up. I actually would expect him to open up. You're not a guaranteed purchase. Sorry. Not... No, no, you're not a guaranteed purchase. And this is the thing. like, Okay. <laughs> unless you're purchasing something that I need to wait behind for. <laughs> so Unless... And the re- only reason why I've become stricter on this okay. is because I want to always be at my best 
for all of my clients. And if I am doing extracurricular activity, if I'm going over my <laughs> if I'm going over my time in um, talking about um, like okay the Ro- Ro- Rolls Royce thing, if I'm you see me if for that I- instance right, I open a door for you. I've got other things I've got to do, and if those other if you're gonna eat into my time. The only way you can eat in, eat into my time is if you're making a reassured purchase. That's not wasting my time. But if you're here to browse, come back during browsing hours because whatever I've got going on in the evening also has to take priority. And this is what I call having a balanced life. Unless you you tell me why it is super urgent you have a real super urgency of seeing so for example if somebody was like oh like um a customer says to me oh i can only call you after between seven and eight because between the um between the hours that you're open i'm gonna be doing i'm in a super important meeting and i you know i won't have time because i'm flying out the next day i'm gonna answer your call yeah how do you know that? Huh? How do you know that? If they've told you in advance. Okay. If they've said to me in advance. But if you haven't said for me in advance and I see you like it's five past and five past eight and I close at eight and you're knocking on the door, I can only talk to you at that point. I can't lie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a I, bit different. I'm I a bit different. Uh-huh. I'll take a different. Only that. Okay. I will talk to you and see, and uh, you have to give me, like, for me, it's like, it's all about reasoning, isn't it? Like, is it worth my time for you, or do you have to actually come back tomorrow? Because I also have a diary and a schedule with things. It's like something I say to my wedding clients is like, um, I am doing your wedding cake, but please do not fear. And I put this in the contract. If I do not answer my phone when you're calling, yeah, don't be afraid that I haven't seen your email or, you know, um, I'm ignoring you. Please be aware that I'm also doing cakes for other clients. And I have seen your email and I I will literally put it in a le- um, number of priority. So if I know that like, yo, I've got to get three cakes out tomorrow, but your email is like, can I change the color green? But that's change my cake from blue to green and um but you're ringing me down every like ringing me down throughout the you know when i'm open but i'm not answering straight away or i'm um or you haven't managed to get a hold of me and you've spoken to someone else and you're waiting for a reply i always say to them you know depending on how far away i always say like within the month of your wedding yes you become my priority but also understand that there are there probably is like 12 people before you and my priority at that moment is to get those cakes out because your response is going to take up eat out of that time where i'm designing whereas you can actually wait until tomorrow so it's understanding how to manage manage your time efficiently and manage your clients as well by also stipulating these things in contracts there you go so okay cool so but that that kind of like but i'm that's just me. I'm very strict when it comes to what time I answer my, even WhatsApp. Like sometimes like when people are like, oh, but I WhatsApp to you and you didn't, I don't take order. I always say to people, I don't take orders via WhatsApp. You have to go through the right channel. Therefore you'll get my response. Because if you go through the right channels, it will tell you that, oh, we take two, it's, um, it's one to three working days to respond. If it's urgent, give us a call. You get that message. So, me, what I would do... <clears throat> obviously, look, it depends on the type of product, right? Yeah. Because I was saying that, like, with Primal, because I'm going to yeah. buy something really cheap, or I, I don't know. No, but uh, this is where I feel like you're just, like, yeah, it, the level of price... It, for me, any customer, regardless whether it's more expensive or cheap, like, you can't have one rule for them and one rule for everybody else. I, oh. I would I'd go on record now saying I'd discriminate. Okay. I thought I'd explain. I'll, I'll tell oh, you okay. why, right? So, if you had like uh, a, 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 a cheaper product or something yeah. like that, something that's like like it's um, penny sweets or something like yeah. that, right? Um, then the hours between X and X. Do you see what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but pennies make pounds. Cool. 
but it, it's it's like more more there's more people there's like there's there's um it's less bespoke right yeah the reason why i use like the so okay one thing i realized when you were speaking as well i realized in this context as well i this expectation i can never have my employees i would never because i as an employee would never do this i would never open the door Right, so so what it has an employee? Yeah, you would. But not. but I realized that me as the owner, if I was there and the dude walked up to Rolls Royce or whatever, I'd open the door. Right yeah. now, well, as you were speaking, I started thinking about it more. And the reason why I say I discriminate, right? I I use price discrimination, right? And what I mean by that is that I'd be happy to be in the back phone business. Yeah. Right? And what I mean by that is that cool. That's why, I don't know if you, you, you noticed or you heard or whatever, when, mm. when you were speaking about the time I was at, and they said they called after whatever, I was like, oh, you charge them double. Because my, in my head, it's like, okay, if you want service after hours, yeah. it's, it's double, it's triple, it comes with a, a surcharge. Like, if you want to get me at a particular, if you want to the freedom uh, and the audacity to be able to call me at 1 a.m. to speak about something, mm. that comes with a service charge. And I'm happy to... That's why I'm saying... Can I ask you a question? Go on. All right. So, you stop... When you have your restaurant, right? Okay. You have food service between the hours of 8 and... uh, Let's just say 8 till 8, right? Okay. And I come through the door and it's 10 past 8. And I want to order... I'm trying to order that biggest meal ever, but... Your ovens of you switched off your ovens. Are you gonna switch your ovens on back for me? Depends on the type of restaurant. No, no. Good. It does. It does. It does. Okay, it does. okay. The reason why that's why you said cheap for six. Okay, so all if right. It's, if it's like Burger King, it's yeah. like you're just tough, right? Yeah. If I'm doing like posh, like Michelin star, I cool. Like I would sit you down. I'd explain the situation and be like, "What can I make for you?" I would I would not say to you restaurants closed, you're going home. I would speak with the kitchen, see what we can put together for you, and I'd serve you something. It might not necessarily be what you But I want I, I want what I want then. Cool. So there's like that's so so cool. <laughs> I'm only I, giving this example because I know I've been in that position where like people have come in after our service time. Um, when the, when we're doing full cooking and I've been like, no, sorry, the kitchen's closed. I used to be that person to be very flexible. I was like, oh, I'll see what I can... But what, like I said, depending... Like, one thing I've realised is you. I do give alternatives and I can say to people, I can do you a salad and I'll throw out a salad. But to, for me to switch on my electricity and blah, 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 blah I've come to... I'm very strict with it now. Not that I, it's because I don't want the money. It's only, it's really about um, my my um, my focus as a business. And my focus as a person as well as a business. It comes down to me as a person. Because it's also giving giving time to myself. I think it's because of my experience as well that I I used to, I, I when I had the cafe, I was that, I mm-hmm. used to do that. And I really started notice, it's great that I'm doing this, but it's actually taking so much time away from the, like, I'll give an example. I just want to go home sometimes and wash my hair. I know you really, really want the food, but the fact is, it sounds like, but washing your hair, Nastasha, you can do that anytime. Not when you've got, when you're running a cafe, doing doing the cakes at the back and it's you know but i would say even at that sometimes you just want to kind of just close and close forward so look i i totally get that because um mental this, health is real yeah and uh protecting your time is also real yeah. yeah and that's the word that's a good word that's the good phrase to use it's more protecting my time and yeah. i also through because of through my experience i really now have become to understand when a restaurant says like 3 30 like from 8 till 3 30 that's when they have their hot food and their kitchen is open i can never say to, i can never bring myself to be like oh can you just do me a burger no 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 kitchen's good so but 
that's because I've had that experience and I suppose for me I've now I I I in the utmost not that I didn't respect people's time before I respect it even more so my thing on that is just about finding a balance and not obviously not letting them walk all over you yeah but like I like for a customer coming in I'm just thinking like how can I even if I can't give them the best experience how can I like meet them halfway yeah. that's the whole thing about why I wouldn't shoot them away so I would close yeah. but trying to say okay you know because I understand yeah. closing the kitchen is not a joke right yeah. so it's like okay we have this left or we can do this would you be you know rather yeah than saying, no. I mean yeah that that is something that I, I did do when I had, I knew that, oh, I'm not rushing home to do anything mad, busy. But the other thing that I also experienced of doing, going, not having those boundaries, because I think that's what it is, having healthy business boundaries, is the same person will probably come and come a little bit, cl- not on closing or after closing, but close enough to closing yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they'll have like two or three friends with them and go and they'll be like, oh, sorry, no, I can't do that today. Then they'll be like, but you did it last time. So, so. And then you're like, huh? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, did yeah. it last time. And you're like, oh, that's, and then you want to explain to them, oh, because that time I wasn't, I didn't really have any plans. Oh, and then they give you the story. Oh, but I brought my friend this. I brought two of my friends because the last time I was here and they'll emphasize about the last time. And I remember being in that situation in the cafe and I was like, okay, I'm not doing that anymore. And I shut down that thing about when I used to say to people, no, sorry, it's closed now. They'd be like, oh, Nastasha, no, it's closed. And then I'll be like, it's actually close because of that one person that literally then started to say, you did it the last time. And I was like, eh, now it's blackmail here. Like, and then I had to do it. Like in that set, and that time I remember just having to be like, you know what, Nastasha, just do it. You know, I'm smiling because I've been there. (laughs) You, you, You do something for a customer where... You're not even meant to do it, but it's like, you know, I'll let this one slide. Yeah. Or, or, you know what? Cool. You can da 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 And then they come and say, oh, and it's this not, is not Yeah. And then yeah. Be, for them, because you've done it and you had a nice chit chat with them, mm. what they do is that what that time, your Rolls Royce again, you're just about, your staff have left, you're about to look. Then they come and be like, oh, I brought this person, but you did it. And you're like, oh, not to, oh, but you did it the last time. So and it's like then they look at the time and it's just like but it's only just gone eight and you're just like like you're you're holding me under arrest in my own <laughs> in my own establishment what is going on but it is about protecting your time and creating those business um those healthy boundaries in business and it's taken me a long time to learn and that's why I'm so I wouldn't say cutthroat on it but I'm very I have a very firm hand on it because of the experience and what that can also do to your mental health and sometimes you you are just actually you're not even being you you feel like oh, I'm just gonna be nice you know that word nice it's not about being nice it's actually just about running a business because when McDonald's say the drive-thru closes at 12 a.m you're not going to go around through the drive-thru and say oh it's only like two minutes past 12 just give me some big fat they're like no babes it's closed so <clears throat> this is just to go back yeah right this is why i guess i mentioned like the whole back phone thing earlier. yeah this is perhaps easier to apply to something like consultancy or yeah services rather than than, 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 than food but like i think it's very easy to apply to food but what i'm going to say what the back phone okay what mm-hmm. i was about to say with the back phone thing when i say it might be mm-hmm. harder because the less people well it kind of will do the purpose but mm-hmm. like charge trip charge five like if you come off the like we're close to the yeah. but if you back phone you want to get me off the certain hour price is triple price is quadruple you know so mm-hmm. is that the terror but it's like okay if I'm going to deal with this customer, mm. I'm going to get three or four times the money that I would have. But it's difficult, I guess, with, with food only because that that's a shell shock to like what people are normed to. Like, if you come a minute later, it's like, oh yeah, these donuts are now like £20. It's like, but it will get the point across. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. that's why I said I use price discrimination. But with more bespoke, sorry, more dispo- bespoke products, it's easier to 
get across like it's if you're getting i don't know a custom suit and it's like the dude's like okay if you're coming off the hours for this custom suit like i'm gonna charge you double i'm working through the night and da, 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 da. it's just easy with bespoke products that's why yeah. i'm saying the cheaper the products i'd be more more cut for it yeah binary yes or no yeah. but, but i just think when you get a bit more bespoke and you're playing with like Three but, or four zeros. Yeah, I, I completely get that. But that it, that all comes down to communication with your client. That's not just someone turning up. Like, even if I've got a bespoke product and you're just like, my doors are... I'm, I've got my bag and I'm heading out. Of course, I'm going to have a conversation with you. And I'll hear whether it... I, I'll look at how extreme is it that I need to stay for this one, one, one person. If they're like, oh, I got caught up in this and I've been trying to get here. That's... Di- I will always... It's assessing this situation. But usually, <laughs> for me, it's just like, it's a, it's a wrap, come back tomorrow. But it's also also about, like I said, assessing the situation. So why you say that, right? And I love that you just said assessing the situation. So I was just going to put this out there, right? Yeah. Before people do some recall clips and stuff like that. <laughs> I am the kind of person that I can change my mind, right? Yeah. And I won't, beat myself up for having a religion or uh, feeling romantic about how a business or an operation should be. Yeah. I think everything, we, we, we spoke about it, finding the wrong way. Yeah. Look, I have this policy, this thing in my mind, mm. and I think it's it's good to, when you have your place, test it. Yeah. Does it work? You know, are customers happy? Because that's the end result. Yeah, you know, yeah, right? no, definitely. It is and about it, it is about um, having great customer service. I wouldn't say good, great customer service to your customers, but it's also great to for yourself and for your own health, mentally and physically, to also have boundaries. Because like I said, there's always that one that says, but you did it last time. And last time, you're just like... <laughs> Okay, but like I said as well, it also comes down to another rule of assessing the situation. So that's how I operate. This is my flat line. But like I said, if somebody's calling me after hours and they're just like ringing, 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 I always say like, for me, if I need to get a hold of someone, like just in general life, and I know, oh my gosh, this person won't answer after a certain time because they don't answer their phone. First thing I do is send them a text message and say, yo, can you answer your phone because it's actually urgent, you know? Or that's how a lot of, uh, I apply that principle that there have been customers that have said, oh, I really need to urgently speak to you because I'm not, you know, it went over. Or just send me an email. Like my thing is like literally emails is like the best way sometimes because (laughs) funny enough, I check my emails more than I check anything else. I like emails for the paper trail as well. Yeah. I and this is why I'm always like to people send me it drop it in an email don't do this because one thing I hate like as well like when people dm me and I know some people do dm me orders and I will engage with you uh 80% of the time and sometimes my engagement is drop me an email depending on how busy I am or what I'm doing but the reason why a lot of people prefer email is you write down everything that you're looking for in ordering or acquiring that service when it's a dm it's like are you available on this time and i look read the thing yes i'm available can you do this yes and then i have to ask you all of the questions like how many people is it for and it goes back into this one back and forth conversation yeah and then you're spitting me all the images that you like and it's just kind of like going back through that trail in a dm it's actually mind wrenching whereas if you just send an email and say hi i'm looking to place this order or i'm looking to use your service on this day at that time this is what i'm looking for here is i've attached some visuals can you give me a price quote and da, da, da. i can send you one hell of a detailed email with everything you're asking for then bam you have the information in front of you whereas when it's just like a dm it's like this ongoing conversation like with a whatsapp or with a whatsapp with your friend and it's like i don't want to be connected to my phone this much (laughs) you know what i mean it comes to a point where i actually don't want to have my phone now and then when you're not answering they're like hey did you get my last message and you're just like man like this is why if you just send an email 
you just wait the two two three day do you wait for the 24 hours 48 hours whatever however however many hours and if it's really important like i say you pick up the phone and say this is urgent i need a quote on this how much yeah no i i uh i agree with everything you just said uh in terms of like um ordering and stuff like that i think funny <clears throat> when you when you're speaking i was thinking about like my, my sales experience uh, I think everybody so at some point in their time in their life should experience sales. I think it's great for character building and it also teaches you to be very concise. Most people aren't concise in the way that they, they ask for things without knowing. It's just yeah. casually, you just you just don't know be, that you're not being concise. <laughs> I can be like that sometimes. So yeah, I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's a good lesson. But then you appreciate some of the things that um, I want to say you so... <laughs> everybody listening who appreciate the things that Nastasha uh, is trying to say or any any person yeah. who's trying to make an order from uh, yeah well, they, I guess put you in buckets or put you for a funnel yeah to uh, get the end result yeah uh, so I suppose to round up this conversation in terms of business morale I want to say to anybody well my kind of end note on it would be anybody who comes across comes across a sticky situation should always challenge the situation not to challenge it to for a for a whim but to understand to get challenge it for the lesson that you're meant to learn because one thing i've noticed is we actually sometimes you will one you get the same thing happen to you over and over again and you're wondering why does this thing keep on happening and it's usually not because it's bad luck or bad you're 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 doing something wrong you're technically you're doing something wrong and the thing that you're doing wrong is not learning the lesson things repeat themselves because there are lessons that we are meant to learn and to graduate to get to your new stage and when you see something repetitively happening and it's the same scenario with a little bit of a difference with a little bit of a different edge to it or in a different space and time it's usually because you haven't learned the lesson from the, the time it happened the last time. So what life is saying is it's coming back around so you can learn the lesson. So that's why one thing I've learned in business is when things, when I do come across like sticky situations or even in life, when I come across sticky, sticky situations, I have to ask myself, I don't say to myself, Oh, why is this happening to me? I say, what is the lesson I'm supposed to learn from this? Universe, tell me what the lesson here is for me to learn. And the lesson usually comes out and reveals itself. And um, from there, you can know, like I say, my favorite thing, my favorite quote right now is, when you know better, you do better. And what you end up doing is, oh like this happened with this person and this person was moving wild and they're supposed to give me my fruit my my refund for the food the extra people that didn't turn up in your next situation you know that when i hire when i outsource a caterer i'm going to have a contract in place and within this contract it's going to stipulate if i have less than number less people turn up than the original number stated this is what we. This is what's going to happen with the remainder of food. Therefore, if you do, if they do move wild, and you know you do a party of uh, thirty and twenty five people come come through, you know that you can go back to that caterer and say, well, this was stipulated in the contract. If you didn't read it, that's your fault. And what you can do is take them to small claims or whatever. Take action with it because you have that paper trail. And that's why emails are good because you have a paper trail. Um, yeah, so I would definitely say to people, um, it's okay to when you come across situations, um, challenge them, not in an aggressive way, but um, with dignity and humanity, and uh, take. Don't ask why is this happening. Ask what's the lesson. I'm supposed to take away and learn because I want to do better. Um, before I continue, I'm just going to move your mic slightly that way. I was covering it. <laughs> um, 
the stash are dropping some straight gems for us there. Psh, psh, psh. <laughs> um, I think this is a, a great chance to segue into Flavor from the Continent. I have been staring at it for the. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I've been staring at it since I don't know. I'm just real hungry. Yeah, my belly's been. Rum- I don't know. I'm sure people could hear it. It's been rumbling. No, I think I, I like. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> If you've seen that my eye concentration hasn't been towards the camera, it's because I've been looking at the chick. <laughs> I've just been like, yo, should we just rip into this halfway through? Because I'm I just want to taste it because I'm just like, yo, I'm mad hungry. So what have we got? We've got Tony's Chocoloni. Yeah, so Tony's Chocoloni. I was speaking about this before Christmas in one of our podcasts during around about Christmas time. It was probably like the one where we did it in our homes. So we Skyped into each other. Uh, yes, I think you're right. Your memory's better than mine. Yeah. And I was talking about um, Tony's chocolate, chocolate colony. And um, this is chocolate that is, um, I, I <laughs> I hate saying this, but it's a hundred percent slave free, meaning it's just fair trade chocolate. I don't know why they didn't just say it's fair trade chocolate, you know, but it's slave free chocolate, and um, I've had quite a lot about it when it first came out, and everybody was like, it's really, really, really yummy chocolate. Um, over Christmas, I managed to my mum got us some. Um, I've tried one flavour. What flavour did you try? It's the pretzel. It's a salted caramel with pretzel. And I think it's the... How much... How much it's a dark chocolate. I think it's a 56% dark chocolate one. Mm. I really liked it. It's three quarters of the way gone. I don't eat it in one sitting. But like nibble a bit before bed. Ooh, little dessert chocolate. And uh, what, what flavour have you got for us today? Okay, so today I have um, milk chocolate caramel. Mm. Milk chocolate salted caramel, sorry. And yeah, so this is 100% um, slave free, <laughs> fair trade. Um, I'll read a bit about it. Um, so, crazy about chocolate, serious about people. Hello there, I'm, I'm Tony's chocolate colony. I exist to end slavery in the chocolate industry. My mission is to make 100% 100% slave free free the norm in chocolate. Together with you, together we'll make all chocolate 100% slave free. Are you in? Read inside the wrapper. What's inside the wrapper? I have no idea. It's like Willy Wonka chocolate factory. But yeah, um, I want Lucinda to try it because I've tried it. So I really want you to try it and let me know. What you done? You can take half of this home. You oh. said it on camera. You see that on camera? You see this? Because you know we're on diet, yeah. <laughs> not everybody's supp- I'm not supposed to have enjoyment like this by myself. I was I'm smelling it. Yeah. It smells like dark chocolate. This one I got to you. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I took a real big word. But inside, they explain about their mission to make, to end um, slavery within chocolate. And I suppose it's um, just about having, um, paying the cocoa workers the right amount and paying them a good amount for living as well. The symbol's quiet. I actually like the um, the layout of this chocolate. Let me see if I can... I don't want to open it too much, but it's basically, like, really bricky. I don't know if you can see that. It's like a nice honeycomb kind of thing, and it's got Tony's on it. So, <coughs> for people listening... I read that really badly. Sorry, I'm really tired. <laughs> I'm making excuses. No. It um, 
Hmm. I like this one. It reminds me a bit of actually Tolberine. Um, I mm. like the salt. I can actually taste like pieces of salt in there. I think it really complements it very, very well. Um, I'm actually not a dark chocolate fan. It's not dark chocolate. I, I don't know, but I'm okay. just saying because it smells okay. like dark chocolate. Um, mm. But it doesn't taste like it, so I just want to put that out there. Um, but I'm assuming, I, I don't know, I'm not a chocolatier, but maybe that's just a sign that it's rich in cocoa and stuff. I, I don't know. Mm. Um, it is a sign it's rich in cocoa. Oh, okay. Um, you know, chocolate doesn't actually smell really nice. I've been to a chocolate factory. It's like, it's very overwhelming. Oh, really? Too much? It doesn't even smell like chocolate. It's really, it's a really strong smell. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> so this chocolate, I like it. I do like it, but it doesn't wow me. It's good chocolate, but I'll be honest, it doesn't wow me. How do you feel? <laughs> I don't know how I've just gobbled down that one piece, like, Mm. Mm. <laughs> very different noises I know um, if I'm being honest because I've tasted um, the dark chocolate one yeah. the pretzel one I actually prefer this one Okay. because I think what it is is because that that one it's in a blue wrapper it's salted pretzels mm. I think it's because it's not fully it's like only like 56 or 36 or some weird percentage of dark chocolate. And if it's dark for me, I like it to be 70. Okay. I need you to go all the way dark. But I do prefer this one. You know what it is? Is <laughs> This sounds really, it sound really weird. It tastes like real chocolate. It's 100% chocolate. Mm. For me, this is really good milk chocolate. Like... I like for the fact that I literally demolish it usually and it usually takes me time to eat like milk chocolate stuff because I can taste the grains in it because it's not purely full chocolate but it's for milk chocolate is really good for our, our YouTube watches uh, I'm just going to show you guys like the, the chocolate and stuff uh, if you're listening and you've not signed up to our YouTube Head over to YouTube, comment, subscribe, like, all that lo- the lovely stuff. Mm-hmm. So you can get this. I We got it from Ocado, online shopping. Um, but I was actually in Sainsbury's today. And you can also purchase it in Sainsbury's. Um, I think it retails at, like, about this block. I think it's, like, just under £4. Between 3 and £4. But for me, I like it. Um, in on rankings one to ten. Um, Let me take a moment. Rankings one to ten, I think it's a good solid. Um, it's a good solid nine actually. Mm. Ten for me is lit. Mm. Um. Why I wouldn't say it's completely a 10. Um, I don't know, but I just prefer the smoothness of lint. But this is really good chocolate. Um, a good solid 9 for me. I enjoyed it. I think on the rain scale. Do we do hops? Yeah. I'm going to give it a seven and a half. I thought you would. Yeah. You know, I <clears throat> I heard someone talking about um, ratings out of 30, mm. right? Um, if you heard, of, you heard about that before? Mm-hmm. Ratings, okay, cool. So basically... I'm too old school for that. <laughs> <laughs> they do ratings out of 30 because of like... Like the thing is about one to ten, mm. or even like one to five. It's like, like a seven or an eight. It's so close, and then a nine and a ten. It's like it's so close, but like if it's out of thirty, mm. like 
like if you do it in bands like like not so good okay and then mm. good and then within that good of between 20 and 30 you got a high good or a low good of like I don't know like a, a 22 or really a, a good good or like 25 I think you're overcomplicating it it's the same thing as like 1 to 10 to be honest 1 is like really poor 5 is in the middle 10 is the top 5 to five to 10 is in between 7 is like it's very good 9 is is just under excellent sorry I was just a bit like that person doing 1 out of 30 is, that's hell of a so what's, so what's 26 26 is equal to 6 in my opinion 26 yeah for me a 26 would be like 26 for me is like a 6 it's 1 26 for me would be like a 8 we're all different there you go so guys I want to thank you for listening to another episode of Juice and the Sauce um, you've kind of like given the, the audience some gems is there anything for a takeaway you want to leave our audience with okay so yeah we're going to start doing this like one line of takeaway um, I think the one the takeaway uh, for this episode would be just trying to find a nice concise way of saying it is challenge yourself challenge yourself to to fail to fail to do better does that make sense is that a good takeaway hold on i'm thinking challenge yourself to um yes that is what i want to say because when I say challenge yourself to fail, it's not like oh, I'm going out there to fail. I'll, uh, it's challenging yourself to do something. Um, challenge yourself in the, actually, bleh, you're going to cut this. So my takeaway is challenge yourself in sticky situations to do better. Cool. I like it. Sounds good. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys. As always, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm He's taking the chocolate home. Nastasha don't need the chocolate because I'm on my mission, innit? it? I have to catch up. So, um, <clears throat> so what is this? Your little sabotage? You can. You're gonna give it to your dad anyway. Exactly. Yeah, he would like this actually. Um, so, <clears throat> <coughs> come again. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of Juice and the Sauce. As always, you can find us on all the social channels. We're over on Instagram. <laughs> We're on Instagram, Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcast, uh, YouTube. Yes, YouTube. Please go comment, like, subscribe. Let us know what you think. And uh, I guess we'll see you guys in the next episode. Oh, don't forget to let us know what you would like us to try for flavor of or from the continent. Yeah, and even if you are a food maker and you want to send us your product or ask us to come in and eat your product we'd be happy to hey i'd I'd be more than happy to so yeah just let us know and yeah see you on next episode guys see you later bye Bye. why are you trying to like listen but just trying to like edge me out there like fast